Hey chat. It's uh It's been a little while, eh? Actually I say that every single time, actually. At what point am I gonna stop saying it's been a little while? <laughs> Probably like sometime in the upcoming month. But I actually stream like three times a week at that point. <laughs> if I do, maybe. Depends. Anyway, the thing is, uh, I can't be too loud yet because I have a roommate that's sleeping right now. So I'm gonna try to be less loud than than usual, but yeah, anyway. Uh, Manor Lords. Yeah. We'll get into that in a minute. It's just, it's been a little bit, like a few days at least, and I have had like the weirdest few days. Not technically the most stressful few days. I'm gonna turn the music down, by the way, because it's quite, quite loud, I imagine. Sorry about that. So, yeah, I, I've had, <laughs> I've, I've had a past, a past few days. Uh, I had to submit a final project two days ago, and man, uh, group projects. Yeah, if there were ever a group project that qualified more as a solo project, it was this last one. Like, it, it, it almost embarrassing how little my partner did for this project. So, anyway, that's really neither here nor there. It was just a really stressful time over the past few days, because I finished the work that I had to do, but I couldn't really get this other guy to do the work that he had to do, so I ended up doing some of his work for him because he only started working on it 12 days, sorry, not days, <laughs> God, I wish, 12 hours before it was due. So, yeah. Can't be too loud because of roommates saying the Tokyo Ghoul opening with the scream with a roommate nearby. Well, he's he's asleep right now. There's a difference. He wasn't asleep that time. He, he was fully awake, I'm pretty sure. It's complicated, okay? We have schedules and things. Not my fault. Anyway. So, yeah. Uh, project done. It's finished, at least. Handed it in. And yesterday, I decided... Because originally, I was going to stream Manor Lords yesterday. I was thinking, okay, I'll finish my project. Relax for that evening. Even though, realistically, I was going to finish that project at midnight. But anyway. And then the next day, which was yesterday, I was going to do nothing. I decided that was going to be my do-nothing day, you know? Or, okay, that's not entirely true, because I did things, but... Didn't do work, okay? It's like uh, a weekend. Except on a Thursday. <laughs> Close enough. But the weirdest thing happened... Which is that I, I couldn't... I couldn't figure out what to do. I didn't know what to do with myself. Like, having a free day where I just do nothing? I, I don't know, I, I got other work done. <laughs> I just went and did other things. Instead of, you know, relaxing, because I, I don't know what to do. I haven't had, like, that kind of free time in, like, a really long time, so... Anyway, yesterday I ended up doing pretty much nothing. Kinda. Okay, I did chores. I also played a little bit more of uh, Tales of Arise, because I've been playing that game slowly and steadily over the past two years. Anyway. Today we're going to play some Manor Lords. Which is a game I've been, I would say kind of enjoying. I haven't had the time to really enjoy it, is what I'm really saying. Because I've just been busy over the past few weeks. You know, exam season, final project season. Uh, but now, all I have left is one take-home exam due next... Wednesday or Thursday, I don't remember. It's uh, due on the 25th, so that's, that's a Thursday. And that's it. That's actually it. That's completely entirely it. So once I'm done with that, I'll actually have time to make, like, videos and other things. Yeah. That'll be cool. Anyway. Manor Lords. Here's a game. Oh yeah, I moved chat a little bit because I had a thing that I wanted to do and then the thing didn't work, so I'm going to move chat back. See, the only problem with putting myself in the corner is that you can't see the months of the year. And those are pretty important because, you know, it's about the growing season or if it's winter, that should be obvious, but, you know. I don't really want to block it off, but I don't really have a solution to that either, so... Uh, it is what it is, right? Is Manor Lords only available to content creators, or... 
we can also get some kind of keys for it. No, it's only available to content creators at the moment, I believe. I'm pretty sure. I don't actually know. I asked for a key and they gave me a key, so... Yeah. <laughs> Oh, hey, thank you very much, Anulf, for the 50 currency I'm unfamiliar with. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a thank you for the content. Love your humor and dry delivery. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Don. Norwegian kroner. Okay. For some reason in my mind, I thought Norway was in the Eurozone, but I suppose not, right? Don't call my boy dry. <laughs> nah, my my category, my you know, my genre of humor is certainly dry humor. It's just I don't know why. I don't actually even consider it dry humor. It's just Money's not even everyone money tells me it is. And there you go. There's the delayed super chat thing. <laughs> like my entire life, it's always been. Usually, it's my mom that tells me like, ah, oh, yeah, your sense of humor is super dry, and I don't even know what that really means to be honest. <laughs> Like, oh, okay. Thanks, I guess. If it's funny, it works. Anyway, uh, Mandalords actually has its own soundtrack, so I'm going to turn off my background music. There we go. That's a pretty alright soundtrack. Perhaps not the greatest I've heard, but that's a pretty high bar. Alright. We're going to play a new game. Because I have played a little bit. I have the, uh, the save game number one, my favorite town, and then uh, Corbhaven, which I played actually for real, kind of seriously, sort of. I don't really understand the game mechanics all too much, but I'm going to try my best. <laughs> Corbett is the king of Norway, but doesn't know the card. <laughs> oh, wait, so I'm being upgraded now. I'm not just Norwegian. Now I'm the king of Norway. Well, that's a new one. Anyway, a new game. Oh, here's a cool feature. Watch this. Eh? Is it that cool? Now we have the true Corbett coat of arms. Name the city Corbington. I was thinking a few different things. I was thinking Corbinburg. Corbopolis. Oh yeah, we also get to name ourselves. I don't actually know what the feature here is other than, I guess, cosmetic. I think I usually go with this guy. This guy or this guy. I'll go with that guy. Because I'm pretty sure there's only one, like, in-game 3D model that you can walk around as, and I think it's this guy. So we're gonna go with, uh, Quarb. Quab. <laughs> Quarb as the name. Or Corbinius. Nah, that's a little too Roman, I think. Corbett grad. It's a little bit too... A little bit... I don't actually know. Like, where is this game supposed to take place? <laughs> What's the theme? I've always gotten the vibe that it's either like German or like French, because I see a lot of French coat of arms here, right? A lot of fleur de lis, a lot of Christian symbolism, of course. And then other things. New Quobia. You might go with, uh, I think Corbenberg is pretty solid. It's German set in Franconia. Okay. So I don't think, I don't think Corbengrad would make a lot of sense. Maybe we'll go with Corbinburg. Perhaps. Okay, we don't need to change the uh, coat of arms or anything. Because if you move anything, then it kind of... Yeah, it changes it, so we're, we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're not going to change anything. East Corpus. Hmm. Corblin. By the way, how you doing, Corbett? Oh, hey, Hannah. Doing pretty all right. I am, like, mentally recovering from a giant project that... Yeah. Oh, God. It was, uh... Yeah. It's done now, but it was like, I, I mean, I've been more stressed before in my life, but this was like maybe second, maybe third most. Like, you know, those nights where you're like super stressed. So you end up sleeping like a really short duration. You only sleep like four and a half to six hours, something like that. And it's not because of an alarm. It's because you wake up from stress. That ever happened to anybody? No, just me. Okay. Corbin Velopolis. Okay, now we're getting a little crazy. Okay, uh, we do have a few different scenario templates, right? The Rise of Prosperity. This is the one I went with to begin, to start with, I guess, because it's really just chilling. 
So you learn how the game works before you have to do combat and that kind of thing. But I don't really want combat. I mean, okay, no, we don't want relaxing. We don't want challenging. I think I'll go with default, restoring the peace. This seems to be like the most true default scenario where you have a little bit of combat and like the main point is to, you know, use the combat feature to win the game. But it's not like crazy difficult. I think this one's much worse. Where you have... Okay, hold on. This one's different. No adversary. But you do get raiders. Okay, but it's more frequent raiders. I see, I see. Okay. So this one's fighting off raiders. This one's fighting off uh, an off-map adversary. And I think they're going to add AI to the game, maybe? Like AI enemy players, something like that. Possibly, I don't know. Combat is the peasant norm. Everyone needs an octagon. <laughs> what does that mean, bunny? Yeah, AI that builds up their own town is in development. Perfect, okay. That is the one thing I've sort of noticed is missing. Also the fact that I think every map is geographically the same but i think the resources spawn in different regions and we'll talk about that maybe anyway we can get started we don't actually get to name the town by the way i'm gonna name the save some kind of town or actually depends maybe we can we'll see first of all we'll pause i'm gonna let the tutorials pop up because i'm gonna forget like so much of how this game works so i i don't know the peasants yearn for pro wrestling I wish we could set up some kind of like a uh, gladiator district, like a jousting. Oh, that would be cool. If we could get like a jousting area, that'd be sick. Anyway, every region in Manor Lords has the strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, so there are a lot of things to like actually look at with the map before you do anything in this game. And I didn't, I didn't know that. <laughs> the first time I played the game, I just sort of built things up wherever I felt like it. But you know, you should probably like actually pay attention to what's going on. Okay, yeah, victory, condition, dominance, mm -hmm. build up the town, your manor, and then when you're ready, press your claims towards regions owned by opponents. Right. That's because there's going to be some dude who's off map. Yeah, the game's telling me things cool. So we can scroll out and see here, there's a dude who owns these two regions. We eventually have to, like, fight him and take these regions, and I think we need to own all of the map, but I'm not sure if that's necessary or if we just need to kick this guy out. So, like, maybe we don't have to own all these regions. Maybe we just need to, like you know, push him out of the map, and maybe that's it. I don't know. Anyway. Now this map, I believe, is the same, because I think I remember these names. Yeah, so the first... The first game I started in was in Goldhof. Then the second one... Actually, I already started in this region, now that I think about it. I'm like, wait, this is familiar. And then I check, and I'm like, oh yeah, this is the same place that I spawned in last time. I don't know if I want to spawn in the same place then. Hmm... Because I just built a town using this corner of the map where I had the town center here. I put the church over here and I had... Hmm. Well, I guess it can be different because now we spawned in this area rather than over here. It can be a little bit different. Yeah, I can do something about it. First, we should look at what we have. <laughs> Some really weird underwater or underground water deposit. Chat, is this how water works? I kind of feel like it doesn't work like this. <laughs> I don't know about that. I hope you pick anything except trading. It's currently clearly the strongest way, so everyone keeps doing playthroughs with that. Yeah, like, okay, so I played my first two games. Well, first game a little bit, then restarted. And I played it a little bit. And then I watched someone, I think it was Snap Strategies video about getting a thousand people in one town or something. I watched that and I'm like, man, I've been playing wrong the entire time. But then I thought about it more, you know. And then I realized I just wouldn't have fun with that. <laughs> like, even if it's the strongest, is that really... Am I going to enjoy playing the min maxi kind of way? Do I really want to do that? I don't think so. Is a civil engineer that turned into an anime woman? Yes, that's how water works. That's crazy. I didn't know underwater deposits were like... I always assumed they were like, uh, like pockets, you know? Yep, 
Yeah, I don't know how any of this works. Anyway, we also have... Hey, yeah, roads are important for people using handcarts. Uh, the logistics system in this game gives me a headache. It's not that confusing. It's just frustrating, if I'm being honest. Anyway. So, we have some underground water. Emmer, which for some reason, I don't know why they refer to it as emmer. It's, it's wheat. That's what emmer is. If you look it up, it's the type of wheat. And if you look at the, the farm, the farm kind, where is it? There we go. If you look at this... Okay, yeah, this is the way you build things. But if you look at it... Okay, nice, whatever. Uh, it says... I can't middle click on things to, to open up or to hold the menu there, but I guess it opens this up. Okay, got it. So you can grow wheat, flax, and barley, but for some reason it calls it... It calls it emmer, flax, and barley. Maybe I'm the only person confused by this, anyway. Corbett is a min-matcher through and through. I am for most games, but it just feels wrong for this game. I mean, I've seen the min-max strat. I've seen people do a whole lot of importing so that they can refine it into materials that they export. And realistically, that is a lot of how commerce was done, you know? People in cities importing things and then creating refined goods and then selling them. Like, they did do that a lot, but that's... Not really the spirit of the game, I think. Also, thank you, Unfunny German, for joining the levy. I appreciate that. That's a familiar name, because I remember talking about how uh, how you repeat yourself. But <laughs> Redundant username. I'm joking. Kinda. <laughs> anyway, we should start building our town, I suppose, because I'm pretty familiar with this region. Uh, I mean, unless things change, which... Oh no, they definitely have changed. Yeah, I don't think this is the same. I'm pretty sure in this region, flax was a lot worse for like over here. Okay, maybe maybe things do change. Anyway, I haven't found farming to be like too incredibly successful. Maybe it's just me, but whatever. So if we want to build something, let's start with the roads, I suppose. I'm not like a, a huge city planner or anything, but I'm going to like try to make something that looks somewhat organic or nice so for example the last time i built a town i really tried to keep it contained to like the really open areas first and then i had logging camps chop down trees and clear land out for us oh also uh this is in the same spot but it's not a rich deposit which kind of sucks i like having a, a rich deposit of wild animals to start with because you get like a ton of leather and you can use that to export like shoes and stuff. Anyway, uh, there is a rich deposit of iron. That's cool. Sorry, wait. 2,946 iron. <sighs> okay. Clay deposit. No berries. No, there are berries. Okay. I'm sorry, Corbett, but you're... I'm sorry, Corbett, but your womb tattoo ratio from Saffron still lives rent-free in my head on Twitter. I, I feel like... Chat deserves context for that. But they're not gonna get it, that's too bad. Yeah, we're gonna leave that there, actually. We're just gonna leave that as it is. Anyway, so we're gonna build our... <laughs> we're gonna build our town here. And it's gonna have, uh, it's gonna have a little bit of a town square in the center, I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So where am I gonna put that? Well, here's the thing. I want it to be, like, somewhat accurate, but maybe not. Anyway, <laughs> makes me read that out loud. <sighs> I feel like I've said far worse before. Good thing I, uh, I, uh, never get clipped for anything. I am unclippable, so. Anyway, how do we... And do that? I could make it an actual square. No, we're gonna make it... Oh, God. We're gonna make it into a grid. <sighs> you can take the North American city design. Or you can take the man out of the North American city design, but you can't take the North American city design out of the man. 
Yeah, we're going with the grid. I'm sorry. It's just, it is what it is. That's life. Okay, so let's put things... How large does a market square even need to be? We're going to have like a little, little town square. Or like a town rectangle, for being honest. Or close enough to one. <laughs> Whether or not this remains a rectangle, eh, we'll find out. What is that, close enough? That's pretty good. No rich deposit of wild animals, cursed cringe restart, stream over, real. It actually is like the strongest thing you can start with. Wild animals are so good for food. And the fact that these berries are like, uh, you know, two or three light years away from us kind of sucks. Because people actually have to walk over here and gather them. And people walk astronomically slow. Like, walking from what's going to be our town all the way over to here, that's going to be like... That's going to be like several business days, you know? Like, in reality, actual days of game time. <laughs> Which is going to suck. Dead straight dirt roads evil. It is what it is. I'm sorry. I just... You have to, right? Can you imagine... Having a market without it being a market square? That's what I thought. All marketplaces must be squares. See? Isn't that- Oh god, that is so terrible. <laughs> I was gonna say, see, isn't that nice? And then I see the placement of the stalls. Oh, this sucks. That is so bad. There's no way to fix this? Nah, surely there must be. Ooh, it's, it's kind of bad chat. This is, it's, it's kind of better. It's not as bad. What do we get? So this is, I really hate how, why does that, okay, whatever. So this is 36 locations. This is 30 few, or I think 32 locations, right? So we do this. Oh, hey, thank you very much, Bunny, for joining the levy. I appreciate that. Dirt square builder? No, 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 shut up. We're gonna make the grid work. You know what? Just because of that, actually? Just because of that. Full grid. I was thinking maybe I could appease the people. Maybe a little bit, you know? I could appease the people by having a little bit of, you know, a winding roads, maybe a few circles, maybe a little bit of unplanned, more visually interesting. Just because of that, full squares. Too bad. You've ruined it for everybody. The Romans built everything in squares? Exactly, that's why we have to. Okay, uh, so, first of all, we have homeless people. We should probably make them not homeless. Uh, well, maybe. They tend to not like being homeless, from what I hear. So, where am I gonna put these? Because you need to have, like, a decently sized plot. Really not a lot of room here. Hold on, let me think about that. Okay, I have a plan. Not a very good plan, but, you know, kinda. So, we're going to... Because, first of all, you actually don't start with enough materials to build all the houses. So, to do something... Anything at all... What we first need is... Not you. Not you. You. Logging camp. I don't want to uproot any trees for it. I want it to feel like we're naturally expanding this city. So if I want to expand the city, I think this direction would be kind of nice. You know, just start chopping down trees over here, bring them back, build a town that sort of... Sort of expands this direction. I don't know, we'll see. So we're going to slap one down. Let's say like right... Right there or something. We build a road. Well, let's see. We could just go straight from here to here. No, that's disgusting. Okay, I can appease the people a little bit. Okay, we can do... Well, how do I want to build this? There's a different idea. What if we do... What if we do that? Let me do... Hold on. Uh, yes. Grid architecture. Alright. Let me do this. How's that? Eh, it's not so bad, right? Okay, then we're gonna go and grab this, and then we can appease the people a little bit by having, like, a nice little trail that kind of, you know, meanders this direction. 
There we go. See? Happy chat. It's not a straight line. I feel like I owe you money after that. <laughs> This isn't random New World Vinland Coast or World Conquest. Yeah, sorry, Rosset. Although if they had different themes, that would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Okay, so people will get started on that. Anybody who's unassigned, anybody who's uh, unemployed is going to work on construction. So you should get started on that, probably. I don't think we need that many people. See, the problem is that we have one one oxen, okay? Or one ox. And this guy, this guy moves logs. And he's the only dude who can move logs. So we have one livestock capable of moving logs. Meaning it really doesn't even matter how many people we have assigned to working on this. In fact, if I wanted to really min-max, what I could start with... I wanted to build housing. How would I even do that? I mean, we could do something like this... Oh, oh god, my grid is so, so bad. <laughs> uh, maybe... Oh, that's bad. That's really bad, actually. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. This, this, this. Ooh. It's not snapping. Or it, it is snapping. I don't want it to snap. Wait, can I do... No, not that. This, this... This without snapping to the no, no, it's gonna snap to roads anyway. I can't, can't do anything about that at all. Even though I disabled the thing that says snap to roads, no, okay, cool. All right, I guess it doesn't work for plots. Okay, yes, this is gonna be pretty bad. Oh god, uh, avert your eyes, chat. <laughs> the grid has been ruined, it's been three seconds. No, I hate this already. Yeah, this is kind of terrible. Wait. No, 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 no. Hold on. We're getting rid of the entire thing. <laughs> it, uh, change of plans. Change of plans. It sucks. It's all bad. We get rid of everything because I hate it. How do I remove buildings, by the way? Oh, I click on them and then I do that. Okay, never mind. I hate it. Yeah, stream's over. Go on, everyone. Go home. It's done. Okay, maybe maybe we're not vibing with the grid. Maybe the grid's not a move. Maybe. Okay, fine. We can do a little bit, a little bit more of like an organic thing where we have like a little little path that goes this direction. Okay, fine, whatever. Okay, no, that looks terrible. If you thought I played grand strategy games slowly, then you're in for a treat. Okay, let's, uh, we do this, and that, and then that, and we do a little, little thing that, there we go. Okay, cool. And then we're gonna build housing differently, okay? So, we're gonna say, okay, first we, we develop the thing over here. This is gonna be the market square, so what we're gonna do is actually... I don't even know if this is a good idea, but we, we also need to build a granary. How big is the storehouse? Not that much larger or smaller. Okay. So we can build a storehouse like here. And then we can build a granary like there. That should be enough for everybody to work on, I think. And like, okay, sure, it's a little bit min-maxy, but we're going to start with the stuff that's like closest for construction priority. Because then whoever guides the ox is only going to move it like this far first. And people can just start working on that. Stop overthinking and have fun. I can't stop overthinking, okay? Any game that requires me to think is an automatic overthinking. Naval builders actually did their streets and grids. They just all use different size tools, so that's why they were all so janked up. <laughs> you know what? I wouldn't even be surprised. But also, thank you for being the VTuber I enjoy. Well, thank you very much. 
Yeah, I've been uh, not reading chat. I've been too obsessed over uh, perfect, perfect placement for my grid, for my people, and my peasants. If I wanted to min max, proceeds to min max. It's not min maxing. Okay, I'm not doing the trading yet. Okay, yeah, this is the guy, Hildebold von Bernoite. The man himself. Now we can write back, but I don't think we can actually say anything other than like roasting him. Yeah, we can just say you have no rightful claim and just leave it at that. But you know, I don't really want to die. So wait, is he just me or does this guy look a lot like, uh, this guy looks like Askeladd from Vinland Saga. <laughs> Maybe I'm crazy. <laughs> anyway. Hey, Corbett, I just, I just beard witness. Oh, just, just bared witness? Isn't that, uh, English language, born witness. No, it doesn't sound right either. Okay, continue. The greatest musical masterpiece of our generation. I was wondering if you can actually speak some Japanese or are just good at mimicking the sound of it. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm sure I've caused a little bit of confusion after I released that cover where uh, people think that I actually speak the language. It's a lie. I don't speak a single word of the language. Okay, that's not true. <laughs> a little bit maybe, but... Yeah, I am, uh, I am very good at mimicking phonetic pronunciations in speech. It, uh, it comes free with my hearing, I guess. Yeah, I don't actually know the language, like, at all. In fact, I think there might be, there might be one, one phrase, uh, one phrase that I might know. But I'm blanking on it now, and I don't want to embarrass myself. It's something like... <laughs> the only thing I know how to say in Japanese is I don't speak Japanese. <laughs> it's like... Ah, oh, what is it? Nihongo somebody must send or something I don't know I completely forget I'd have to look it up again hey Corbett hope you're doing well thank you very much my eyes are like I don't know why but for whatever reason this morning my eyesight is like terrible which is you know that's normal for me but anyway what was I what was I saying oh yeah thank you Rachel I'm having a pretty sleepy day for whatever reason. Actually, I think that's the, that's probably the last few days of fatigue kicking in now that I think about it. <laughs> that's probably the last several days of waking up stressed, working on an assignment, and then uh, going to bed stressed, and then waking up and repeating for three days straight. It's not as bad as I've had it before, though. The worst I ever had was uh, staying awake for 48 hours straight to finish an assignment. Would not recommend you do start hallucinating. I can tell you that for certain. Corbett paid a Japanese singer for the cover and passed it as his voice. <laughs> like Millie Vanilli? Who is that? Wait, did somebody actually do that? That would be kind of embarrassing. Anyway, we did, uh, we did finish what we're doing. I need, I do need to assign you for that. Wait, log storage gets moved here? Oh, I guess that makes sense. So if you have your log storage too far away, or if you have the logging camp too far away, it's going to take people a really long time to move stuff. Okay, well, whatever. Right, so we have our little market square kind of thing. We already have this road here. I don't know how much I like it, though. It's kind of weird because it looks like it's an intersection, you know? It kind of looks like an off-ramp going onto another highway. Like you're driving along here and you go, ooh, and then you, you go, like you could just, you could just have like a straight line. I don't think it would be that bad, but 
whatever. So we're going to keep this road because I feel like, you know, it's going to maintain some of the organic nature of some part of the village that may or may not exist. Who knows? Anyway, we do need one person in the storehouse, one person in the granary, which leaves one person working on the, uh, this thing. And you're going to go... Uh, you can... You can chop down stuff over here because I think we want to sort of expand this direction. So people are going to start moving the supplies. Problem is we still have the homeless person tents, so... This is going to be the market. If we put houses here, we're not going to have a lot of space for houses. I think what we want is a little bit of... A little bit of... Ooh! That direction. Maybe a little bit of... A little bit of... Ooh! A little bit like that, okay. Then maybe... I'm sorry, the grid is returning, but it's just, it's a small, small, small grid, okay? It's not... No, and that's a problem, because we still have supplies in the way. Okay, actually... Here's an idea. We're gonna have a few smaller burgage plots over here. Oh, wait, what? Plot too small. Ooh, that's a problem. Really, this is too small. What if I rotate it? Okay, if I rotate it, that makes sense. I guess these buildings are larger than I remember them being. Okay. That's a problem, because we can only fit one house here. Hmm. Let me look at that fertility again. Okay, never mind. Uh, hmm. Okay, well, let's get a few things down. First, we need a well, don't we? People can, like, have water. That's a good idea, I think. Put that right there. Uh, hitching post, we do want to move, but I don't know where I'm going to put that. Honestly, we should put at least one near here, because this is where all the logs are, right? And the logs do, like, one thing. Or the, the hitching posts do, like, one thing, I think. You get the ox there, and it just moves logs to the log storage, which is only at the logging camp. So we might as well keep it here. And then eventually they'll move from the logging camp over here. So close is fine because I think it'll be the best. And then, you know, maybe somewhere midway would be fine as well. Why is your... <laughs> Bunny, please. It's the, it's the crest. It's the crest. It's the crest. It's the... It's the... it's the thi it's the thing. <laughs> Please. Corbett the city planner? Yeah, top tier, of course. I can't wait for ye old horse and carriage travel. No, Frederick, you are supposed to turn left at the turn. <laughs> Is this a better looking Banished? I don't think I've ever played Banished, so I couldn't tell you. Oh yeah, so by the way, also people, they set up food stalls and the way that they manage these is uh, brain rot inducing. I don't know how these work at all and it's really frustrating because sometimes you'll have like 11 months of firewood stored up and people will be like, I can't get firewood. Like, what do you mean you can't get firewood? We have 11 months of it. We have so much, it's everywhere. We store like 200 firewood and they're like, well, I can't buy it on the market. Okay, I don't, I don't know. It's kind of annoying. Anyway, burgage plots. We're going to put houses and we're going to put them. Mm, you can be smaller, can't you? And have the same effect. Dude, what? You aren't supposed to do that. <laughs> Okay, we can do... We could do that, but then they wouldn't get work workshops, and I kind of want the workshops. Okay, we, we really have to wait for these supplies to move. We have to wait for this to move. We can't really do much with that. But some people are kind of just waiting. I don't know. Well, what are you doing? We're bringing this over to... Oh, right, because to move the burgage post, right? Or not the burgage post, the um, hitching post. 
I'd let Corbett make an IRL city. Clearly, you were not here for the City Skylines 2 stream. You wouldn't be saying that otherwise. Hold on, wait, maybe I... Okay, so here, here's an example. Oh god, okay, here we go. If you weren't here for the City Skylines 2 stream... Okay, anyway. <clears throat> We're keeping that. It's a staple. Alright, everything's been moved. That's great. Burgish plot. Slap that down. Slap that down. Slap that down. And I don't have enough resources because this, this game hates me. Okay, so you're you're doing stuff, right? Selling a tree. Shouldn't there be... Oh, right, no. Uh, their families don't join them until you build houses. I forgot about that. Does Canada have the same boring grid cities as the USA is rumored to have? Yes. Unless it's East Coast. Well, even then, East Coast is a little... little grid-like. So you don't care about contour lines at all? Yeah, make those peasants live on weirdly unlevel houses so the babies roll like... <laughs> roll down the hill like wheels of cheese in England. It's fine. Oh my god, yeah, it really is terrible. What am I gonna do? Terraform this place? I mean, this is where we started, so... What am I supposed to do about that? Not just Quebec, but also like Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Newfoundland, that kind of East Coast. Actually, if you go to a if you go to a town in Newfoundland, you'll find that it was actually created by about seven people, all of which who live there. So that's why it's a little less like a grid out east. It's because there are uh, there's like a population density of one person for every 723 million square kilometers. The houses will lean. They'll lean if I say they lean, dammit. Imagine standing here trying to pedal things. Imagine trying to be like a, a salesperson there. Suck to be that guy. Oh yeah, we actually have... Because you're not doing anything. Which means that... We could have more people fell trees. You know what? We're just going to have people work on chopping. Yeah, I get you're homeless. That's fine. You don't need houses. Actually, now that I think about it, you don't really need anything either? I mean, we have... See, that's the... Here's the crazy part. Why are you, as a warehouse worker, guiding an ox? What are you doing that for? I mean, I guess it's better than nothing, but I'm thinking, like, you you run the storehouse, which has firewood, which means you should be putting firewood in there, or whatever. The grid layout for a medieval town is really hurting my European heart. Oh, 
Really? It's the... <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's the grid layout and not the Among Us? <laughs> like, <laughs> this is fine? Okay, how many logs do we have? Five timber. We need at least six to build our houses here. Have you ever played Ultimate General Civil War Corbett? I have no idea what that is. These people are slow as hell. I'm speeding up time. Yeah, you can be homeless. That sucks. Six timber. We can build something. Okay, let's let's grab some kind of construction. Burgage plot. You see, it would... <laughs> I mean... Uh, yeah, it's not great. But how else would I build these houses? Like, how else am I supposed to build these on this very not flat land? The houses have to be built somewhere. What am I going to do? Build them like this? Like, it doesn't change anything, you know? Actually, this does change something. We can have four families live here, where we could only have three families move or live here. So maybe that does change something. Although we don't get the three workshops, we only get two workshops. Tough one. Well, let's see, actually. Now, now I'm curious, because I want to see. Maybe I could do something like, not that. What if I do this, and then we use half the plot? Because maybe we don't actually need anybody. Let me think about that. No, I think you kind of want to have a backyard in every plot, because even if they're not working as artisans, they're still going to grow stuff like... You know, they can have chickens and stuff, so... Maybe... Maybe we do want, like, the side thing. Or I do like this. Oof. The grid does not agree with me. Oh, no. Wait, can I do... How is this uneven? This doesn't even make sense. I hate this so much. I can't, like... Nope. There's no salvation. Okay, it's either gonna be bad or worse, and I think I'll take my chances with... Oh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I can work with that. That's fine. Okay, we need someone to not work on something, so you can move here. How is this uneven built with no regards to contours? Okay, but like... This area over here is pretty flat. Oh, no, fine. No, no, it is not. <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's like close enough. Well, it's fine. See, look, they know how to build on... Look at this. Look at this. Look at my, my proud peasants. I taught them well. They can absolutely build level houses regardless of the actual... I don't know what you call this. I mean, you call it a contour, but it's more like a slope, I guess. See? They're fine. Every peasant is an Oxford-educated engineer. Real. Almost will move to the plot. True. See, look, it's fine. Not a problem. Alright, that's three houses built. We're gonna need a few more, so I'm thinking we're gonna have to grab this. Well, it really depends on where I want to have things. Uh, this is going to be considered a holy site, so we're not going to disturb this. We're gonna keep that there. 
Although we might want to... I mean, we're expanding this direction, but... We also want to have, like, a, a hunter's launch, right? So... There we go, hunting camp. Because we need food, apparently. Supposedly. I don't want to tear down any trees to make it work. I want to make it nice and snug in there. There, how, how about... There you go. That should be just fine. Okay, so let's grab this. And I'll, I'll even I'll even throw chat a bone, okay? I'm not going to make it a perfectly straight line. I will even follow a few of the contours. Maybe. Kind of. See, look, I'm even going to go around this tree here. See, isn't, isn't that super authentic? I'm even going around the tree. There you go. Oh, that looks terrible, actually. But I think it looks worse mostly because of the way that it bulges on the on the corners. Okay, now that looks terrible. <laughs> Never mind, we change it. We change it a little bit, at least. The people are going to be working anyway, so let's, let's see if I can... Uh... Oh, that's so much better. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Okay, so we can use that as like a natural sort of expansion point. We just need someone who's unemployed to go and uh, work there. We actually need a lot of people before we get anything going. I mean, we have fuel, lots of fuel. We just don't have a lot of, like, uh, food or anything. It looks nice, thank you. The isolated village of Corby has many odd traditions. Old records suggesting the initial population consisted of university-trained engineers. The layout built with no regard to evenness. No, 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 no. It's not about the layout necessarily. It's about the housing. It's about the houses, you know. These look fine. Nice and level. When you spawn in the middle of nowhere and all you have is a hill and everything else is covered by forests, then you work with what you have. <laughs> in the presence of worshipping an unknown symbol in the village. Unfortunately, we are going to have to build a church. We can't worship the uh, the holy site itself directly, but it'll be close enough. Oh yeah, we could spend a little bit of money. Uh, we're not going to do that because we actually need food first. Well, actually, that's pretty relevant, because we could get a vegetable garden. The only problem is that this is, like, tiny space for a vegetable garden, and also, it requires labor. Like, someone actually has to harvest and, you know, plant the vegetables and stuff. Right now, people are kind of chopping down trees and building, so... I don't really want to do that. Once the hunting camp is constructed, then maybe... We have enough timber. We don't need two people on timber. Besides, we only have one ox. Okay, more burgage plots. I think we could probably have one more burgage plot over here. Right, so we can build that. Build that. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. Yeah, we can work with that. might regret building the holy site here, actually. 
like really close to town. Maybe we can build houses? Wait. Ooh. Ooh, I have an idea. Can I? Oh my god. The Among Us house. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. How, how many can I get away with? No, that's too small. This one? It's too small. Okay, okay. Hold on. The priest of the holy site shall dwell in this temple. Uh, this needs to go kind of here-ish. This here, and then we can do... Oh, that's so perfect. No, please, please let me build the... Yes. I don't know if I like that very much, though. The layout. What? Okay, whatever. I mean, if we could have two families here, then this would be fine. Okay, yeah, we're building it. That'll be uh, two families, actually, so we don't even need to build another Burgage plot. Although we kind of do, because we need more population. So we can build this one, then we can upgrade it. Wait, no, right, I, I built this one, so we can have six total. For now. Okay, so in theory, people can eat, right? They have fuel, they have food. Okay, that's good. Still a little bit of homelessness. It happens. Oh yeah, did we finish building this yet? We did, okay. I do want to send one person there. Hunting limit of 10, because I don't want to hunt too many animals. I imagine the reason why they have a limit is because animals probably, like, you know, function as animals. Like, the population probably can't recover from zero, I imagine. So instead, if we reduce it to half the population, and we keep it at half the population... Well, I don't know, it's complicated. I'm no expert on... sustainable hunting. I figure we don't want to deplete too much of the population. In theory, the best you would want to do, actually, is only hunt a surplus. So, like, hunt one animal, and then... It reduces to 20, and then somehow it goes back to 21? I don't know. We'll make the number somewhat high, because I feel like that would actually be fine. Actually, are there any bandit camps already? Yeah, there are. So every now and then, these guys, they don't even attack you, really. You can get, like, an event that'll have them attack you. And it'll usually take a while. It'll give you, like, a year in advance to let you know that you're about to be attacked. But otherwise, they don't really do that much. I mean, they steal your stuff every now and then, which kind of sucks. <laughs> when we ask for things to be uneven, he goes OCD, but for Among Us, he doesn't mind. Well, you understand the, the great importance of the holy site. Wait, can I add a shrine in here? Cosmetic? Oh my god. The Among Us Shrine. Okay, we can erase shrubbery. Gotcha. So we could just like... Fuck you, get rid of your shrubs. Okay. Let me, let me not snap that to a road. This is gonna be... You know what? It's going to be nice and poetic. Let me get a good judgment here. So I imagine north is probably going to be this direction. See, I don't know if the sun is setting or raising right now. Or if it's like midday. If it's midday, then north... No, south would be this direction because I assume we're in the northern hemisphere, right? Because if we're in Europe, then we're in the nor northern hemisphere, which means that the sun should be in the southern hemisphere, meaning that 
shadows are cast towards the north if it's midday. In other words, we're gonna have the uh, we're gonna have the shrine point towards the sun, which would be like this direction, kind of. If they will let me fit it in here. There we go. Beautiful. This is perfect. A settlement level increase from building the Among Us house. <laughs> okay, so we uh, we do have a new development point. Oh yeah, armament delivery. We do get free stuff. Okay, so. We can specialize the region. And a lot of this stuff is super early access. So early access that I think over half of it is inaccessible. Something about that. Yeah. Okay, so we can't really do that much. What do we want this city to be? I mean, we know that trade is... Definitely broken. Remove the tariff from foreign imports, effectively reducing all import prices by 10. Yeah, so if you want to do the, the strat that uses trade, it is absolutely cracked. Like, kind of unreasonable, not, in my opinion, not that much fun to play. I would rather, I think, develop an actual whole city and stuff war industry well you see we actually do have a rich iron deposit and so in terms of exporting mining isn't even a bad idea but on top of mining we could have an industry where yeah we produce war things just to make armor like crafting helmets and stuff you're gonna need metal and we can get tons of metal deep mine okay Wait, enables the building to extract resources indefinitely if placed over a rich deposit. So yes, we definitely want this at some point. Charcoal burning. I don't think it's a big deal. I've never found firewood or I've never found that we've run out of firewood at all. But we can't exactly do like hunting either because we don't have a lot of good things for that. Doubles the capacity of berry deposits? Nah. Heavy plow? Nah. Foreign supplies? Nah. I guess we could work our way down. Advanced armor making? Master armor making? Ooh. Hmm. But don't you start on the fertile region? I don't know. Let's check the fertility of the region. So we're certainly not over here. This is really low fertility. That's true. Low fertility, low fertility, low fertility. Very low fertility, at least for Emmer. Flax. Ugh. Wouldn't want to be these guys. Barley and rye. And it sucks over here. <laughs> Glad that's not me. Okay, so we could actually build up some farming. I guess. But like, where are we going to farm? We'd have to chop down a bunch of trees. We have clay here, wild animals here, iron here, stone here. Farming would be like here, I guess? Maybe? Or beer. Let's export beer to the world. Huge. If you're going to expand, you're going to need trade between regions. Got to have one region for food? Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. Uh, that makes sense, I guess. All right, so I guess we could maybe do a little bit of farming, which would be, uh, which one is that one up here? Fertilization allows, allows you to use a fallow field as a pasture, which rapidly restores lost fertility. Interesting. Produces bread from flour with twice the efficiency of communal ovens. Irrigation. Rye cultivation. 
more resilient, therefore grown in places with lower fertility. I don't think we need rye yet. But we don't even have enough money. Like, what am I going to do? Get a second oxen? Well, it would be more efficient for farming, wouldn't it? You know what? Yeah, sure. Why not? Maybe we can do some farming and then we'll do both. We'll do some farming and we'll also do some uh, armor making. Because, yeah, we definitely have a lot to exploit here. Oh, damn, it's potatoless Europe. Yeah, we do not have anything. We have boring old soggy wheat. Okay, construction's done for everything, I think. So no one's homeless. That's good. We can build a second house here. I'm wondering how I can integrate the Among Us. Like, could I somehow have another Burgage plot? Could I have that here? No, it's way too small. To get one house, it wouldn't be terrible. It wouldn't be good either, but... Maybe if we do... I would like it to have some kind of a backyard, at least. Something. Not much. We can work with this. We just need more houses so people can move in. Because right now we do not actually have enough people to sustain a village. We only have what we have for like the next, uh... Two months of fuel, apparently. Oh, wait. Wait a second. I thought we had more fuel than that. Oh, we do not have that much fuel. Oh, also, yeah, we do need to create an army, but we're not going to do that yet. It's going to force people to go back and do things I don't want them to do. So you're working on that. So we have food. We're kind of fine on food. What we're not fine on is... fuel. Okay, so we don't really want to expand this direction because it's like animal territory. It'll cause migration, apparently, which I assume means it'll just, like, get rid of it. So if we want to expand... We do want to expand this direction as well. We've been clearing out this region, but I think up here in the north, we can do a few other things. So we can put the... We can put the wood cutting, Sort of like... Sort of like here, I guess. And then the other thing we can do is grab this. We can treat this as like a, a fork in the road. So we can say, okay, what if we want to do that? Uh, it's not the prettiest thing. Maybe we'll just split it off. Yeah, okay. So we want to attach this over to here. And do that. We'll follow some of the contours of at least the uh, the shrubs. There we go. Eh, uh, could be better, could be worse. The Among Us has cursed the village? No, 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 no. This is the shrine. It's the holy site. Didn't you just say you never really had problems with fuel? Yep, and we still don't have problems with fuel because we still have two months left. So all we have to do is build the woodcutter's lodge and then we'll be fine. The only fuel problems I've had is when you have fuel in storehouses and people are refusing to bring the stuff from the storehouse to the market. So people think that there's no fuel, but there is fuel. It's just not being built or it's not being transported, I guess. Worshipping a false god. No, 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 no. See, these people, they don't understand, but I'm actually giving them divine guidance. I am uh, practically their god. 
So I built this monument to myself. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we're still in the first year. Sometimes I like to take things slow, okay? I know it's been an hour. I would never be able to make a video on this game. Because <laughs> I would be doing too much dumb shit for too long. <laughs> like all this. Like building the Among Us shrine. Okay, so the approval is low, but that's because they're cringe. We actually have food. Well, we have some food. Woodcutter's Lodge, perfect. The only problem is uh, we don't really have the people for this. We need to have positive approval rating because, yeah, otherwise we're going to have zero population growth. The thing is, you have to wait until the month's done. There we go. See, people are having a good time. Kinda. Oh yeah, other than that, we also need a church. True. Okay. Well, see, the problem is that we don't have the things for a church. Okay, we just don't have the population to build a church, so let's not do that. We actually just have to wait until we have positive approval. We do have a few hides. Uh, no, we're not going to make boots yet. Not really much of a point. Okay, so here's the here's the thing. I don't actually understand how markets work in this game. So I understand that this guy, he's chopping down firewood. That's great. Sometimes they'll make their own marketplace stall, and then sometimes they don't. So, like this guy, the storehouse over here, has firewood, and he's also set up a stall. Because you can only sell food, clothing, and firewood on the market, from what I know, the one firewood stall is ran by the one dude who just collects stuff. So, like, is this guy gonna make a market stall? I don't know. And the other problem is that sometimes when they do make a stall, the guy who comes and collects all the firewood and brings it back here steals all the firewood, so, like, his stall always has nothing in it. I don't know, this game's complicated. We'll probably see that at some point. Workforce is a constant issue watching many others play. Yeah, I mean, it's a combination because you always need someone who's unemployed to build something. But also right now, we need people to survive. So we need someone to be able to sell stuff. We need another person to be able to sell stuff on the market. And then we need the people who actually work and do things. Like this guy who's selling things? He didn't hunt that meat. He got it from this guy. But if I didn't have somebody working this, I think the... hunting camp guy would eventually create his own food stall. But... Oh, wait a second. If the hunting guy creates his own food stall, he's only going to have meat at the food stall. Because that's the only thing he controls. But if we use the granary, then we can have bread and meat, which goes to the market. Oh, that makes sense. So you do want to have a lot of granaries and a lot of storehouses. More or less. Or what you could do is you could have one of each. You could have... Like, for example, uh, you could have... This with zero meat here. And then this guy will just make his own stall at some point. I don't know if I want to do that. So that means this guy is going to sit around doing like nothing for a while, so.
Let the peasants get sore feet. We need the hides. Bruh. Hmm. Positive approval means we should get somebody moving in at some point. Right? Right, chat? Eventually. We have food, we have fuel. Stocked for now. See, here's what I'm talking about. We have 35 firewood in here. The food stall, not that one, sorry. No, the firewood stall is here, but there's only six firewood, but like... Okay, could you, like, move the firewood from here to the stall? It doesn't do anything while it's in here. It's useless. People can't use it. And it's only used for one thing. So what are you doing? You're moving firewood. Okay. Well, I guess it's better that she has the, um, the thing, you know? Every month, one family of above 50, 70, above 75, then two families. Well, darn. I guess I just gotta wait then. Oh yeah, we call this Immunerites, but I think we can change the name, can't we? Yeah, here we go. Corbenberg. Beautiful. Oh yeah, do you guys see that they're, uh, they're making, well, not even just making, they're releasing this year. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. Which I was shocked to hear about. I thought for sure if they were going to announce it, they would release it next year. Nope, this year. I don't know when. I don't know if they mentioned when, but 2024, supposedly. Yeah, I'm going to be honest, I did not play enough of Kingdom Come Deliverance, the first one. I think I tried on two different occasions to start playing the game, and then I just kind of didn't. At some point, I'm like, yeah, I don't know if this is the vibe. But honestly, I think that was more of like not having enough free time kind of thing. Like, if I had enough free time, I could sit down and over the course of, like, maybe a few weeks play the entire game. I mean, I could if I really wanted to do, like, an entire Twitch stream Let's Play of the series. I mean, I did play a little bit of it as a Twitch stream, a little, kinda, like, two years ago. Didn't pass the Corbett rigorous vibe check, yeah. Like, am I allowed to build and maintain a city? Actually, maybe. I don't know. I didn't play enough of the game. I heard something like that might be possible. Maybe. Ooh. We did get one extra family, actually, didn't we? That is not a YouTube thing <laughs> okay just followed on my uh on my twitch okay in preparation for the uh for the kingdom come deliverance stream series of course speaking of free time house college almost done i have one assignment left in my entire academic career and then i am never going back and that assignment is due next Thursday, and it'll take maybe two or three days to do. It's not really as, as much of an assignment as it is a take-home exam, meaning I actually don't know how bad it's going to be, but I'm going to say if I put in like an average amount of effort, I'll probably get like a, I don't know, 75 on it and I can live with that. That's all I really need. And then I'll be done. I will have my degree. Finally.
You know what? That one guy isn't doing anything. We already have that. We already have this. What's next? I guess we could get planks. So we have plenty of timber. But without building and without creating planks, the timber doesn't really do anything. Need an empty house and then move into? Yeah, so we have seven living spaces and five families. So I guess what we could do, actually, is build another burgage plot. Yeah. Okay, so here's... Here's the plan. Actually, it would be super funny. One market stall location. Perfect. Beautiful. And then we take this. We do a little bit of trolling. Oh, come on. You gotta let me put this in here. Perfect. We can have one stall in the marketplace here. Now, from here, we can do a little bit of, uh... A little bit of trolling. Don't worry, I'm not gonna do this. I'm gonna... Well, we, we can have it kind of, I don't know, do a little, 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 little bit of a curve in here, maybe? There we go, that's... Ooh. I don't like the way that extends, but I can live with it. There we go. See, this is gonna look so natural. It's gonna be integrated into the town. The Among Us will seem like it was always there. Okay, we did clear out this region, so I'm gonna use that for building some kind of housing. Okay, and we can do something like this maybe just going to try and connect up another road over in this general direction Maybe something like that. I don't know. It's not great, but I'm thinking we can have houses line like this region over here. So, yeah. Burgage plots. We can slap one down. I don't know. Like right here? Wouldn't be terrible. Actually, can I, can I do a thing where I start here, here, then do... No. Can I do that? No. Can I do this? Yes. There we go. Now we're talking. Okay, so I don't want... Well... I mean, it wouldn't be terrible. No, I don't think that's what I want. That's not good. Do I need to extend this? Maybe. Okay, let's try again. There we go. Okay, so I think I want something like this. So, you know, two houses here, one house here, and then they both get a little bit of a workshop, probably gonna put, like, chickens in there or something. I don't know. Something like that. Can you live with it? I'll probably get rid of it eventually. <laughs> I prefer the natural formed roads, the foundation. It is what it is. <laughs> Corbett carefully laying down his roads, methodically laying them down. Corbett creating the grid for his houses within 30 seconds, making them uneven. It is what it is. Why is it so crooked? It's a reflection uh, of life, actually. It's, um... 
Hold on, I can think of something poetic. It's it's about how sometimes you plan for things and they don't go as planned, and that's that's the lesson learned. Something like that. Yeah, we also got stolen from. Really can't have anything these days. Oh yeah, you guys don't actually have clothing. That's crazy. Well, you see, that's a, kind of a problem, actually, because we don't have a lot of hides, so we don't have a lot of leather, or we can't make a lot of leather, meaning we can't make a lot of boots. So if we want to build, or if we want to get clothing, we're going to need, like, flax. That's what they used before cotton, I think, to produce clothing. And, like, where are we going to grow flax? This place sucks. I mean, eh, it's not terrible over here. A little flax field right here? Maybe. I don't want it to be too far away, though. Because then it's going to take them ages to get anything done. Goats give passive hides? Yo, goaded? Hold on. Huge. Okay, and it can be anywhere. I guess it doesn't matter. Beautiful. Price is averted. Thank you. Me when I build a goat thing, but there are no goats. Where are my goats? Disease people suffering from disease may stop working. Uh... Yeah, you'll be fine. Okay, construction's been completed for a lot of things. We could even expand that. So we have nine living spaces and we have six people. So I think we should be fine for now. Maybe we'll build another one. We have some unemployed family that can work on something. What are you taking a stroll through your town? I mean, we could. Feels like a pretty miserable place to live. <laughs> yeah, not a lot to see here. Including no goats. Imagine this <gasps> goat! It's real. Can I jump? I can't even jump. Hold on. Hold that thought. The goats have arrived. Mr. President, a second goat has arrived at the stable. Oh, this is perfect. Yeah, I gotta look him right in the eye. Hey, buddy. <laughs> We're gonna kill you for your hides. <clears throat> anyway. No, that's just Birmingham. Most welcoming British city. So what did someone said we should get one family each month? If we have above 50% approval? And two if it's above 75? Oh yeah, before we start actually... Well, wait, no. We need a tannery, for sure. So, we should have that. Man, I don't really want to chop down these trees, because I kind of like having them there, just for the vibe, but... Well, we have this entire region over here that I just built, so we can probably put a tannery in here. I kind of like this spot. Yeah, we can use that. It's next to the storehouse as well.
Trees around the village are bad because they obscure the vision of raiders. True. How are you as a Viking going to know what to raid if you can't see the town? You gotta consider other people, you know? Can't be selfish like that. It was bad because you can't see the raiders. Ah, uh, no, don't worry about it. We'll be fine. We'll see him coming no matter when and where. Mostly because the game will tell me. And also, I think we're fine for the first year. Okay, so let's get a tannery. And then next month, we should be able to get another family to get uh, clothing. Yeah, but the trees look cool in my backyard, so they stay real. See, there we go. Clothing stall. Oh, wait. People don't even need boots. They just need leather. I forgot about that. We don't even need to have somebody dedicated towards making boots. The tannery is by itself more than enough. Well, not more, but it is enough. Okay, so the last thing is a church. But to build a church, we're going to need... A sawmill. Is that what it's called? A saw pit. Close enough. So we're going to put that down right next to this. Like right here would be fine. Because you still need the ox to move logs from here to the saw pit. So we don't want it too far away. In fact, once we've cleared out this region, I'll probably clear this out, and then I'll probably clear this out. Just the, the general region surrounding here, so we have room to expand in this direction. But I think also we're going to want to clear out this region. So the Woodcutter's Lodge is really slowly but steadily taking care of that, I think. Although, do you actually chop trees, or do you just make firewood? You fell nearby trees to produce firewood. Okay. So, in theory, the Woodcutter's Lodge... If we limit the area, I mean, we kind of want it to be this... This direction. In fact, we might even want it to be closer to start with. Like, here. So we can chop this stuff down. Yeah, the shrine is more than enough, honestly, but apparently the people are not satisfied with the, uh, the holy site, so I guess we'll have to build a second one for, uh, I guess some other god. That's crazy. Do you plan on farming next year's? We are a fertile region as well. Maybe. Well, we have good wheat fertility in this area. Flax, uh, not so much. We might set up a small flax thing here. Maybe. I think over here would be better for flax, though. I mean, just look at it. Or even, I mean, uh, up here, actually. This wouldn't be so bad. A little bit of flax in this area. We could probably clear that, but I don't think we're going to grab flax yet. I think what we need is wheat and barley. So barley, we're looking at... This isn't so bad, actually. Maybe we'll build barley here, flax over here, and wheat kind of anywhere else. Something like that. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, we have two months of food, which is really not good. Why do we not have enough? Oh, wait. Oh, right. Ah, uh, food. Yeah, we, we don't have any food. <laughs> My people are starving. Okay. Forager hut. 
That's going to be so painful. Maybe chickens? Yeah, I'm thinking maybe we don't go with the forester's hut. We have goats here. Yeah, let's go with... Let's go with chickens. Yeah. We now have zero wealth. I'm sure this will cause no problems. Well, that'll be food, at least a little bit. The hunting camp can't supply enough, really. We don't have enough population to have enough people to really pick berries, so... Actually, here's a bit of a logistics question. So, like, let's say we wanted to pick these berries. Would we want the job site to be close... ...or further away? Sacrifice? Eat each other solves so many problems? I mean, yeah. Cannibalism solves too many problems, but people are too afraid to talk about it. Like, come on, you can solve both overpopulation and hunger with cannibalism. I don't see what the problem is. Anyway, a real question though. I don't know where to put that, uh, the forager's hut. Because I think we want it to be close so that we can store the berries in the forager's hut. Then... But then it's not gonna it's not like this family is gonna do anything right it's not like they're gonna set up a stall and even if they do it'll only have berries which would suck oh but multiple eh I don't know I think we want it close I think I'm gonna say close is the better answer for this so maybe we'll put it like here a forager's hut I think maybe like halfway. Well, no, maybe even closer would be fine, but now nah, we'll keep it there. So what I'm thinking is the one family that works here is going to go and bring berries. It's going to take them like a long time to do that. They can go grab berries with whatever time we have left. And then what we can do is uh, all of the people who work in granaries, you're going to have multiple people grabbing stuff from here. So maybe that, maybe that's good. I don't actually know. This join doesn't seem like much progress. New to the game or doing a challenge run? Uh, new to the game, mostly. Generic storage full. Oh, right, it's the saw pit. It's always the saw pit. Actually, we do need you to work that. Hmm. Actually, no, we don't. I lied. We do want a construction reserve, though. So let's go with, uh, 20, I guess. We have 31. This is going to take a while. I think it only needs one log, though. So whoever has the ox can start moving. There you go. Hey, buddy, you uh, <laughs> all stuck there? Jacob? Actually, we do have enough firewood, so I'm thinking we don't need to have this guy. Oh, that's the wrong place. Oops. There you go. You actually don't need to work on that because we have 15 months of fuel, so... You're fine. Instead, you can work in the saw pit. The funny thing about how time passes in this game is that it could take this dude literally days to get over here. I don't know how long a day lasts in the game, but yeah. Nine leather, bro. Yo, wait, 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 wait. Nine, nine leather. They stole nine leather from us. Dude, that's like half the leather we have. Okay, we gotta kill the bandits. I don't know if we can kill the bandits, but we gotta kill the bandits. Who was it? 
who did this. It was you, I've decided. Chat, how strong are the bandits? Or the brigands, the outlaws, the ne'er-do-wells, the low-lives and thieves? You can kill the bandits, but you're gonna get robbed non-stop anyway? Bruh. Okay, so, I mean, if we raise the militia, that's gonna be like days to march over there. That's going to be days where people aren't working on things, so maybe it's just not even worth it. Like, we, we have two months of food. We have too many things to worry about. We're almost done. Nice. Alright. Enjoy your hajj to the uh, bushberry. The bushberry? Wait. <laughs> the berry bush gonna take him ages to get there no we're not gonna raise the militia yet I think next year we have to well I don't even think we have to it just says that eventually there will be bandits that attack us and we gotta like kill them but sometimes other people kill them so like it's not even my problem right sometimes this guy will just be like okay time to raise mercenaries and then he'll just destroy every camp so I don't know they have money who the bandits is it worth sacrificing some of the population when I don't even have a grave digger like people could die and <laughs> we have we have nothing for that if someone dies they get no burial we don't even have a church I think the eggs are definitely helping out though with the food problem not a lot. A little bit. The dead must be given to the Among Us. Yeah, oh, I should have built like a graveyard in the Among Us. Maybe I could build a graveyard here. Can I do that? Corpse pit. Oh no, okay, never mind. All right, let's take a look at this family. Transporting. Look at that. Bunch of berries. Let's go. That was kind of fast. Yeah, that food is still kind of a problem. I'm going to check to see... How much the berries do for this? God, it takes them so long to get there. I think an entire month actually passed. <laughs> and then once, of course, we have no berries, it's kind of over for us. We have no wealth, so we can't get more eggs. Dude, they're even there. They're each carrying one. They're each carrying one berry. Single. Okay, we are so cooked. Uh, food. Chat, any suggestions for food? Burryless individual. Bandit camp? Okay, that can't be that bad, right? Okay, that's not so bad. It's further away. Hmm food so we might have to uh hunt more of the wild animals probably just to survive because the berries are really not doing it each person carries one berry back home which is what one food for one month or something so yeah that's not great we have an excess of yeah okay food right 
Okay, well, we'll get more population soon, and I guess we can get... You know what? Actually, you can also work. Uh, actually, all of you can work for this, because I think you should probably pick these before winter comes. Before they expire or whatever. Yeah, we're fine for fuel. Oh yeah, what about our planks? Oh, we have plenty of planks. We could actually build a church now. Where do we want the church, chat? I've been thinking, you know, medieval European cities either have one of two designs for their church. Either the church is like up on a hill further away, or the church is like in the exact center of town. So I'm not sure which one we want to go with. Because the last time I, I played a game, we started over here. So I built the church over here. I do like the hill far away kind of thing. Not like too far away, because people do have to walk over there to pray. But... I don't know, this is kind of a nice hill, right? We can have it up here. Like, it'll get rid of one log. That's fine, I guess. Oh, also, by the way, we can't really see because we don't have... Uh, we can still see some of the shadows. But the way that we want to place the church, I think, is like this. Because we want the sun to shine in through the back of the church onto the altar. That's how churches were built, I'm pretty sure. They were built intentionally so that the sun in the morning would come in through the back window and illuminate through the back of the church where the altar is. See, I know some of my medieval historical accuracy a little. Make the peasants travel to feel the burden so they need to be closer to the Among Us. Yeah, we, we force the population to worship the Among Us site because the church is simply too far away. Okay, so from what we can tell, the sun sort of comes in through the back. Kind of. Let me look at some shadows. Oh yeah, no, never mind. We are not even close. I think. Look at these. Let's see, like, how how is this supposed to be? Like this? Like this, maybe? I think it's like this. Okay. This will be the layout, and we're going to put it like... There you go. That'll be the church. Then we can have like a church road that kind of splits down here. Yeah, it's going to remove some shrubs, but that's fine. I'm just going to have it go along the trail. There you go. That's not so bad. It's kind of nice, like a little little trail that goes up to the church. It is quite nice. Come one, come all. Feast your eyes on our fine selection. Yeah, we do need more living spaces. Oh right, we don't have any unemployed people because we need food. Oh yeah. Well, we don't need anybody to work in the saw pit. We just needed the surplus planks for that, so you can do that job, I guess. Next month we should get another family, and then we need to build... Well, do we have any more spaces for people? I feel like I built another plot that should have... No? Okay, I guess not. Yeah, never mind. Okay, well in that case, what we could do is build more Burgage plots. 
sort of over here, maybe. Yeah, this will be a little bit cursed, but let's, just let me cook for a second here. Oh <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> what if I... No, it has to be like this. I'm sorry, chat. Oh god, it's gonna be so bad. Well, that's that's too bad. <laughs> We're gonna have the workshop be like this little sliver right there. So approval's fine. What are all the things that can reduce approval chat? Obviously there's homelessness, but that was like so long ago. I don't even know why it's still relevant. Apparently it is. And then there's also, if you're starving, if you're homeless, if no fuel, that's what I can think of. You can relocate buildings, better house placements, wait. Oh, you meant like if I wanted to move the tannery. Yeah, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Make positive comments about the Among Us. Yeah, so if the, uh... If the population doesn't, uh, worship the Among Us, it actually, uh, increases their discontent. Fun fact. So if, if you have, like, high discontent in your village, then you just have to build one of these. And it'll fix it. Alright, what about the berries? Three months of food, that's an improvement. That's a lot better than two months. Especially since it's been two months. No, I guess I could, uh... Put on fast forward times 12. I feel like I'm gonna miss something. I tend to play games on really low speed just because I'm afraid of missing something and then like the better I get at a game, the more likely I am to just play it at max speed. Like Vic 3, I play at max speed like always. I feel like that's everybody though. Does anybody play Vic 3 at a lower speed than max? Because there really isn't much to do at like a small level. Amogus. Vic 3 is basically an idle game, that's real. I was playing a little bit more Vic 3 uh, yesterday. Well, I mean, I wasn't going to play a lot of Vic 3 because I was waiting for the announcement. Sorry, not the announcement. I was waiting for it to release, you know. It was going to release actually the day after my birthday. And I thought that was going to be kind of cool. But then they pushed back the release. So I wasn't playing for a while because I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll just wait all the things I want to do. I'll just wait until the new DLC releases. But I decided to play anyway. And uh, I still to this day, I have never played any of the starting major powers in Vic 3. Not a single one. Not even the major powers, I'm pretty sure. Well, unless Egypt counts. I don't know if it does. You know what, in hindsight, this isn't the worst thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I've made worse. God. Imagine you, you try to... You try to get home, you gotta walk all the way through here, and then I realize there's a second gate here. Like, there's no point in having this. I could have very easily just had the Burgage plot been a square. 
I don't know why I had to add this little extra rectangle. Anyway. Oh yeah, the church is done being constructed. Look at that. Big old church. Although the sun's not really going to be shining through the window all that much. Unfortunately. You know what's, what's really crazy about this game? Before I get back into Vic 3, I just want to like acknowledge... Like this is really detailed texture work. For a city building game. Like really impressive. Although I suppose city builders have been getting kind of like that recently, haven't they? I remember the first Frostpunk looked gorgeous. Even though most of the time you're looking at your city like this, right? So the textures shouldn't even matter. But then again, I guess you can go like this, so... There's something to be said for nice textures. Anyway. Remove trees for more sun, real. Anyway, back to what I was saying about uh, about Vic 3. I haven't played any of the great powers, and I probably still won't. I prefer playing as the smaller powers, so I was playing Diviet like two days ago. Not two days ago, yesterday actually, a little bit. I started the run like, I don't know, a week ago or something, and I played a little bit more yesterday. And I got to a point where I just sat there and I'm like, am I actually having fun with this? Like, am I enjoying the game? Or am I just playing it for the sake of playing it while having something off, something else off in the background? Like, Vic 3 is in theory first monitor content, but I kind of treat it like second monitor content. Whatever's on the second monitor becomes main monitor content when I play Vic 3. So then I realized, like, actually, I'm just not having that much fun with the game. So I closed it. And I'm going to wait until the, re the uh, DLC releases, because it actually looks good. The DLC, unironically, looks pretty neat. My most enjoyable campaign in Vic 3 was with Cambodia. Pardon? Since you get a cool new color as a recognized great power. Oh, wait. Chad, is that real? Actually, I was going to think, like, oh, can I check that? No, I can't check that. What am I thinking? I didn't know flags changed when you became recognized as a country, though. That's kind of neat. Whenever people talk about Vic 3, it feels like people are forcing themselves to like it. Okay, so I have... I have a lot of hours in Vic 3, and I do kind of like the game. I have 700 hours in Vic 3. So I do kind of like the game. The problem is that there's not a lot of game to like, if that makes sense. Like, there just really isn't a lot there, you know? Oh yeah, I should probably specify. I don't even know why you have to specify, or why you're allowed to, because... I mean... You're only really going to get the uh, the one berry patch, but whatever. Also changes your name to Cambodian Empire if you stay monarchy. Huge. But yeah, Vic 3 as a game is kind of... Kind of, yeah. I enjoy learning more about it. I enjoy becoming better at the game. Do I, do I really enjoy playing the game? Hmm... I think for me, it's about having the opportunity to just like... It's like the the main reason why, even though back in the day in like EU4, there weren't, there weren't like a ton of game mechanics or anything, but it was still kind of enjoyable to play the game because in your head, you were creating these like... These like headcanon scenarios where like cool things would happen. Where like you get to create these semi-plausible historical thing. So anyway, that's just my two my two cents on it. Isn't Sus Town the best name for this town? Well, it is the starting point of the uh, the Corbett Dynasty, so maybe, but maybe not. Also, I completely forgot we can upgrade all of these, can't we? I'm playing a little bit too relaxed. I could be making money. Speaking of things we could be doing, though, 
I mean, obviously, we just want to upgrade all the houses first, I think. I love money. It might increase some of the discontent, I'm not sure, but we can just build more things. I've never played Vic 3, but how people describe it, it's how I expect most people would feel if you put them in front of EU4. Yes and no. I think Vic 3 is a much easier to learn game. I think the concepts are less abstract, meaning that there's some intuition you can have while playing the game. When you pick up the game, if you have even basic knowledge about how like supply and demand works, like you're already one step ahead of most people. Also, what's wrong with you? What is your issue? Oh, we don't have a lot of timber. Well, no, that's that's um, that's surplus timber. We have two surplus timber, but we actually have 34 timber. So there's, there's a surplus that's really small because we're upgrading all the houses. In fact, Vic 3 doesn't have return cores functions to travesty as well. Well, I mean, it has that return state thing that I don't actually know how it works. Sometimes you get access to a return state demand rather than a conquer state demand. And I don't know when it activates. Anyway, enough about Vic 3. Manor Lords. This game wasn't really on my radar for a while until actually kind of a week ago. Like, I, there were people talking about it in some of the discords that I'm in, but I never really paid much attention to it because I'm like, ah, city builder, I mean, cool, but I mean, the only city builder that I've really enjoyed a lot was Frostpunk. So unless it really gives me Frostpunk vibes, I don't know if I'm really vibing with it. But I don't know, I kind of like this. I think I'm going to like it more when it's out of early access, because I really like seeing all the possibilities for what you can do with your uh, with your town. And for now, we don't really have a lot of knowledge or anything, so... Eventually, though, locked in early access, work in progress, yeah. So this game, I thought actually it was going to be a full release. I just wasn't paying attention. The game was very outside of my radar for a while. So I figured, uh, I figured it would be fully released, but I guess not, which is fine. I actually don't know much about the studio, because this game, I always thought that Manor Lords was being developed by, like, a larger studio, and that it's, like, a really hype title that everybody's been wanting because, you know, uh, really big developer with a large track record had made it, but apparently it's indie dev? This game is? And I didn't even know that. Or maybe... I remember something about indie dev. I'm pretty sure it is this game, but... Yeah. Either it's this or a different game. You get a check, because that would be a little bit, uh little bit embarrassing if I'm wrong I mean it is early access oh yeah the game releases in like seven days like a whole week uh yeah so it's not a total war game blah blah, blah early access wait it's just one dude named Greg <laughs> you just said like I don't plan on releasing a roadmap is it just one guy there's no way it's one dude building this game that can't be right surely that can that can't be right Hold on. Wooded Horse Studio Games, I guess? Indie Game Publisher. Wait. So they're not the publisher? It's one guy. <laughs> no. Nah. So the publisher is Hooded Horse. But the, the dev is one guy. It's a single dude. Oh, yeah, because it's, um... Oh, yeah, 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 never mind, never mind. It's, uh, what is it, Slavic something... 
That's like the name of the of the thing. Men or Lords, hold on. Of the of the studio, you know what I mean. Slavic Magic. That's the name of the of the Steam developer, the the guy. Is this serious? It's the one dude. It's Greg and he's the only guy behind the studio? That can't be real. I'm going to the website because I want to know. I want to see like meet the staff kind of thing and it's just going to be one guy. It really is just one guy. No, this can't, this can't be. If one guy made this game, I'm going to feel like I'm wasting my life. So please tell me it's not just one guy making this game. Oh my God, it's one guy. Wait, 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 wait. My name is Grzegorz, assuming that's how you pronounce that, and I'm the developer behind the city builder game Manor Lords. It's one guy. Oh, I'm wasting my life, chat. <laughs> one guy made a game that looks this good and is this impressive. One guy. Oh my god, it's Stardew Valley all over again. Well, I mean, good for him. This is this has been like crazy. And to have it released early access by a publisher, that's kind of crazy. There were several historical advisors as far as I know. Yeah, that would make sense. I mean, one guy doing all the research for a medieval city builder plus also you know, building the entire game, that would kind of suck. It would be tough. So how are we doing on the Burgage plots? We could use another clothing stall. Well, yeah, so to do that, we need to get more regional wealth, which is going to take a few months. So we're upgrading the Burgage plots. Yeah, so we're upgrading the burgage plots so that they can give us money each month. We're also getting hides from the goats. Not a lot of hides, I assume. One hide right now, 12 leather. Well, it's all right, I guess. I think over the winter, we're probably going to dwindle the wild animal population down to five. Just so we have enough food. And then, yeah, so we can't have people working on the berries anymore. We might leave one person here, maybe, I don't know. There just isn't a lot of use. What else do we need to build? Farming wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay, here's, here's an idea. So if we want something to be built, we can start by growing wheat. Because clearly we need food, right? So if we want to build wheat, we can clear out this area. And you grow a bunch of wheat. I think that's fine. So we're going to get you. We're going to change your work area. We're going to limit that to... Here, I guess. So you can start chopping these down. The thing is, we're going to have too much wood. We do also need stone, don't we? Because I think... To expand a granary, or to build another granary, you need stone. And to build a storehouse... Well, we don't need stone for that. Pasture. Sheep farm. Windmill. Communal oven. We also need more burgage plots so we can keep expanding. Okay, we can do a little little thing like this, I guess. Ooh, not enough goods. Oh, right, because we're upgrading all the plots. Yeah, never mind.
You know, chat, I have considered in the past, maybe I would try making a video game. The only problem is, uh, not enough hours in the day or the week or the month, to be honest. Oh God, what's wrong with you people? I don't even know what's wrong with them because they need to be upgraded. But yeah, I was thinking about it. Maybe I have technically created a video game once but that was for a school project and it sucked so like it wasn't even an actual video game it was more like a uh more like a proof of concept more than anything else Just create the video game while sleeping. True. That's a good point. I could simply not sleep. I think that would work out. Okay, we're gonna drop the hunting limit to five so we can feed ourselves over the winter. And then when spring returns and we can pick berries again, we can uh, reduce that. But also over the winter, we want to clear out land so that we can start farming. It's almost indistinguishable as an Among Us now. Or it's almost impossible to, to actually see that that's an Among Us. I think it's more, much clearer in the, uh, the summer months than in the winter. Anyway, so I think the whole plan... Right, we have a hitching post here, don't we? I might, I might actually move that. I don't know where I'm going to move that, but... Maybe that could be like right there? No, that's a terrible idea. Okay, here, here's a plan, sort of. So if we want to build a field, we have really good fertility for wheat pretty much anywhere. So we could decide to build the field like over this direction. Maybe. Move the post into the visor. Tragically, we also uh, have a shrine here already, so. Yeah. The holy site, which completes the Among Us. We also need, uh, what is it? A farmhouse, whatever that's called. Yeah, this. Ooh, that's pretty big. Okay. So that's not going to go over here. I think I might be underestimating the amount of land you need for farming. Hmm. Let's change our priority. Let's clear out as much of this relatively empty region as possible. So we can farm here. Of course, we're going to have to have the quarry or the stone deposit here. We could even build that now. Where is it? Uh, that would be in gathering, wouldn't it? Nope. Okay, it's in mining. That makes more sense. Stone cutter camp. Okay, so you don't need to be on a deposit. Because for this, you need to be on a deposit, right? It needs to, like, actually be physically on the thing. But for this, maybe you don't need that. Okay, let's build some roads. I don't like that over here. Hold on. Okay, we can build that, which kind of follows the contour, right? A little bit. Okay, and then we can grab, uh, what do I want? This. Not going to employ anybody there yet. Oh yeah, you know what else I need? I need more wealth so I can get another ox. Just takes too long to move things around. It 
just say you can't catch mammoths? Okay. Here he comes. Peter the Ox. Yeah, we really need a second one. I curse your ox. How dare you? Banned. I don't know. Trading post? We're so poor. I, like, I don't even know what we would export. <laughs> we have nothing. We have barely enough food and fuel to survive. Work area is empty. I mean, you're right. I guess we could unassign you for the winter. Export suffering? That's eh, not a bad idea. I think we usually call that warfare, though. Yeah, it's taking so long for these Burgage plots to upgrade. I mean, what else are you going to do? It takes four timber and we have one ox. But we need to upgrade the Burgage plots if we want to make money, because each month, each Burgage plot that's level two gives you one gold or uh, one regional wealth. So, yeah. Ooh. Hey, a second thing. Second development point. So we could get fertilization. Allows allows you to use a fallow field as a pasture, which rapidly restores lost fertility. I think the problem is that we don't really have animals for a pasture. But that does seem like it would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Instead of creating individual pastures... And it said that using them as... Sorry, wait, what did it say? Use a fallow field as a pasture which rapidly restores lost fertility. So if we decide to go with a, a three-year cycle where there's always one fallow field which is rejuvenating the fields, then I think we could have three farms here, right? Does that make sense? So we can just move the animals from one field to the next field to the next field in a cycle every three years which should rejuvenate the fields i think are we doing crop rotation yes we're doing crop rotation well less so crop rotation more field rotation for now because i don't think we need to rotate crops if we can uh if we can get the fallow fields to become pastures which i think we will do because i think it'll be cool so we're gonna do that Also, yeah, that's going to be a uh, low priority. This looks cold. I mean, it's winter. What'd you expect? Although in Europe, I think the winters aren't as cold, you know. When I was learning German in one of my German courses, we had to watch like a few videos in German of like street interviews and stuff. And there were people in street interviews being like, Oh my god, it's so cold out, it's minus five. And I'm like, what do you mean? Minus five is like... Minus five is like a good day in winter. Minus five is like a great day in winter. <laughs> a normal day in winter is like minus 15. At least where I live. Oh, a bad day in winter can get as bad as minus 30 or minus 35. Anyway, Celsius. Yo, it's Corbett from the hit strategy game EU4. Am I late to the stream? Yeah, but we haven't done much. We haven't even had a year pass yet. Oh, but we did do something very important. Is this. I can assure you, this is pivotal for, you know, having a prospering village. I can assure you, when times get rough, the people will pray to this holy site. Minus five is absolutely freezing emergency immediately stay inside. Celsius? Like, like minus five degrees Celsius.
Like we're talking about the same temperature scale. That could get schools shut down here. That's crazy. Especially if it's snowing. Because I remember, I remember being a kid and uh, the only time, so when I, when I was a kid in elementary school, the only time they would let you in during recess is, or they would, you know, let you stay inside uh, as if it was below minus 25. Minus 25 was the number. So like, so like the, the kids, I remember being a kid still playing outside minus, minus 24 degrees Celsius. You're staying out there. They're keeping you out there. Okay. You, you can feel like a, like an eight year old kid outside in minus 24 degrees during the winter. And they'll, they'll just keep you out there during recess. That's it. Like they won't even let you inside. I don't know what it was. I guess it was because they got all the teachers to also come outside. So they couldn't monitor the inside of the school. But yeah, that's, uh, that's how it was for elementary school for me. Winters were uh, kind of rough. But at least we had like giant snow banks that you could play on. So that was kind of cool. Anyway, people are upset about something and I don't even know why. Not my problem. Not enough fuel on the marketplace. Uh, skill issue? We have eight months of fuel. Okay, so don't you lie to me. I know we have firewood on the marketplace. I was in Finland, minus 40 was the point where people started to die. Yeah, minus 40 will get, will, yeah, yeah. <laughs> minus 40 will do that to you. I would not go outside in minus 40 under any circumstance. Did they have a thermometer on the wall that they tapped when you wanted to go in? No, they would just tell you that it's not cold enough. Like they'll, so, so the way it would work is they they would basically announce that day if it was really cold they would announce whether or not it was going to be an outdoor recess or an indoor recess there were two recesses per day 15 minutes each 15 or 20 minutes i don't remember i think it's 15 minutes each so there are two of them 15 minutes isn't that bad you know but in minus 24 it's not great but 15 minutes isn't that bad so yeah they would uh they would say that day, okay, we're going to have outdoor recesses or we're going to have indoor recesses today. And whatever they decided, it wasn't going to change. Either they decided you were going out or you were staying in. And that was that. Minus five could get schools shut here, especially if it's snowing. That's crazy. Are we gaslighting Corbett again in this game? Yeah, the people say that the requirements aren't met, but I'm looking at eight months of fuel, so I think they're lying to me. I think, you know what I think? I think they're actually just too lazy to walk over to the market. That's it. I said it. They're just too lazy. Or I think it's because um, it's been over a month and we haven't constructed the level 2 burgage plots. So people are complaining. Which is probably more likely, but whatever. Anyway, people kind of aren't doing anything, so I should get them to do something, I guess. Well, like, there's no point in getting someone else to work on log on logging because there's just there's nothing we can do about that. I think what we should do... So we actually have excess timber. Oh no, we can't even build anything because the ox is busy. We don't have enough money for another ox. Hey, you know what? We can have people chop down wood, whatever. If you're not doing anything, then chop down wood. Apparently, supposedly, we don't have enough fuel. I think that's a lie. But just in case, we can get some more firewood. No other ox, still game over, real. Also because I want to have an ox that can help work the fields. I did get that perk, heavy plow.
Remember when mountains had snow even in the summer? When 2,000 meters were the point of perma snow? Yeah, back when I was little. Is it not like that anymore? I feel like mountains still have a lot of snow on them. It snowed here on the 1st of March and the school I worked in shut down one hour in. Okay, but like... How much snow was it? The Omogus demands ox reel. The holy Omogus site. I really wish you could have like custom churches, but you know, I keep I'm gonna I'm gonna hold back on my sort of I wish this was in the game thing because like it's one guy making this. It's it's a single dude, so like I can't really complain all that much, you know. It's one guy. And he's doing a good job. He'll get around to all the things that are necessary. I imagine. Anyway, we shouldn't have more fuel now. No more complaints. Thank you very much. Gotta take a drink real quick. It's one guy, apparently. A guy named Greg. One dude making this game. There were about three centimeters. Where I lived, there was no snow, so probably less, actually. Three? Okay. Yeah, right. I mean, I've heard wacky things before. I've heard, apparently, schools in, in Texas were closed down for, like, two centimeters of snow. Which is kind of crazy to me. I guess, like... For places that aren't used to snow, I guess it could cause a real problem. But it's just a few centimeters. <laughs> I don't know. I guess nobody has winter tires on, so I guess that makes sense. Greg is just a little guy with a big dream that came out amazing so far. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Are you abusing trade yet? No, we're not going to do that. It's not really my style. I mean, I talked to other creators about like, okay, min-maxing strats, cheese strats. People are saying like, okay, well, trade is kind of not working the way that it's ideally supposed to work. So the way that I have been playing is the way you're supposed to be playing, which is where you, uh, you know, you actually build up the town instead of just importing everything and exporting more everything. Is this the next Stardew Valley? If it sells well enough. Although, I think the only problem with a genre like this is that it's just not going to attract as many people as Stardew Valley. Like, Stardew is a very broad kind of appeal. And although, I mean, it's kind of similar here, but, you know, city builders with resource management are somewhat different. Different enough that I think it won't be uh, as popular. It doesn't snow in Texas, so they don't have the salt for the roads. Yeah, that's true as well. I guess you should be prepared for anything, though, because I heard it started uh, flooding in... Where was that? The UAE? That's crazy. Settlement level increased. Huge. So we get another development point. I don't even know what to put that on. Sheep grazing on the pastures slowly multiply. I guess that would be really good though, wouldn't it? Because like we were... Okay, it depends. Because do these actually count as pastures? Use a fallow field as a pasture which rapidly restores lost fertility. I think it really counts as an actual... Pasture. Meaning that if we can get sheep and set up farming, then we can have a self-sustaining, reproducing sheep population that moves between three pastures in a crop rotation that provides wheat. And that sounds like a lot of food to me. And food has been our biggest problem. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we're going to build... The farmhouse is going to be built somewhere like here or something, maybe. 
maybe maybe here wouldn't be so bad. The only problem is that it doesn't attach. Yeah, we don't have a good space to actually attach this to the road. But in theory, there is a location here. How about we actually plan out the uh, the fields themselves? Because I don't know how large the fields will have to be. But there is another thing I want to do, because it's going to be a wheat field, right? So we're going to plan a few things in advance. We're going to start by getting... What am I looking for? Is it farming? It is, a windmill. Okay, we're going to start with a windmill, actually. Because there's a certain design that I really like with windmills. So we can get, like, pretty decent efficiency. I think I can live with 99. Yeah, I can live with 99. And then we're just going to have it face the village, because it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we're going to build that. And then around it, we build the fields. So the biggest problem we have with a field like this... Wait, can I... Can I put the field... Oh my god, I can put the field where the stone is. Okay, we're not going to do that. Even though it technically might work... It's just kind of not the vibe. Okay, so we can have fields that go like this. How large is this field? 0.5 Morgan. What the hell is a Morgan? What do the, the what do the, the funny German words mean, chat? morning lol yeah i know right okay, so we could put this point three is kind of small five hectares yeah i don't know what that means either <laughs> see the only problem with this design is that it doesn't really hug the windmill very well at all like, if I could have it do something like, you know, just sort of wraps around, that would be so nice, but, uh, no. Nah. Actually, wouldn't it be so bad to have three fields that kind of extend like that? That wouldn't be terrible. So if we do something like this, oh, okay, farming, yep, I know how farming works. So, if we do something like this... This isn't so bad. Maybe, maybe not... Maybe not that far. Maybe something like this. There we go. That wouldn't be so bad, right? I guess you should have gone to a better degree like agriculture. They'll tell you all about it there. Yeah, you're right. Agriculture is actually kind of cool, not gonna lie. But like in a, in a mundane kind of cool way. Where like there actually is quite a lot to learn about agriculture. And like it's really... Really interesting to learn, but yeah, wouldn't do a degree on it. <laughs> like there's the whole, you know, there's fertilization and like crop rotation and like climate and like there's a lot for sure. But yeah, it was like Frostpunk grid. Yeah, so my original plan was going to be building a circular city. That's what I did for the last time that I actually spawned in the same region. I had a, a circular kind of... Not a town square. Town circle, sure. I had this in the middle, then a bunch of things coming out from it. Like, you can take... You can take the man out of Frostpunk, but you can't take the Frostpunk out of the man.
The people yearn for the circular city design. Oh yeah, we do need the farmhouse, don't we? Well, we also need the road, so we can just continue this road along, uh... Along the contours, but we don't want, like, too sharp of a thing. We can do something... Ooh, that does not look good. Uh, like that? Maybe? How's that? Eh, it's not terrible. I've seen worse. New message, what's up? We've received reports of a band of raiders roaming the nearby lands. Should we track their steps? Yep, because in a year they're gonna try to kill us. We can have a little extension there, I guess. Okay, so that'll be the windmill, and then we're gonna have the farmhouse kind of near the windmill, because the farmhouse... How's that, actually? That's not terrible, I think. Then maybe if we want to, we can add like a fourth field in this direction. Maybe even another one over here, I don't know. We just need to get this ready for, uh, for the growing season. Deny the problems exist, ignore them, there are no raiders. I like how it says raiders near and then to the left there's a fleur de -lis. Oh god, it's the French. It's March. We gotta start working on the fields. Actually, are the uh, berries regrowing? They are, but it'll take a while. Okay, wild animals, we're going to ease off a little bit because we have at least some food. Wait. I know, we, we really do not. Where's my, my, my thing thing? You know, the thing thing? Okay, yeah, you're gonna bump this up to 15? Yeah. Damn, still snow even in March? That's real. There was... There was snow, literally... Let me think about that. It's April. It's April 19th. There was snow... Two weeks ago. Yeah. Two weeks ago. The day that I handed in my, uh, my final essay for a course... Stonecutter camp. Yeah, we don't actually need that. I just wanted to build it. Farmhouse. You people. At plowing station. Yep. Then we also need to uh, order another ox because I think that only costs 30. I think. I hope the hitching post there actually qualifies just in case I'm going to upgrade that to a stable. Because you do need to store the animals somewhere. So yeah. Oh yeah, okay, I guess we do need, uh, oh shoot, I assigned these people to work on the farmhouse. And I can't unassign them anymore, because <laughs> now it's being built. Uh, we, we can fix that. You can become unassigned for a moment. This needs to be highest priority. Oh my god, it's gonna be April before we can actually... Voice crack. <sighs> it's gonna be April before we can actually get anything done here. I need to drink more water, it's so hot in my room right now. Keep your hearth warm and your home cozy. See, that's gonna be a problem over the upcoming months, is that my room gets crazy hot in the summer. But it, since I plan to do, like, more... more streaming and more videos and stuff, I can't even, like, open the window to air it out. Because if I do that, one, people outside will be able to hear me. And two, you'll be able to hear the people outside. And it's also, uh, garbage day, so for the past three hours, I've just heard, like, every now and then, a loud truck come through. I hope that doesn't pick up on the mic, though. 
Okay, so this is done. Four families are working there. Uh, let's go with three families. I don't think you need four. Then what we do is... Uh, okay, that's interesting. So we can go wheat. So we're going to go with crop rotation on all three. So you're going to be wheat first and second year. You're going to be wheat first and third year. And you're going to be wheat second and third year. So this will be fallow. And this one will be fallow. Then this one will be fallow. It seems for each of these, we're going to need to fence it up to make a pasture. And also to get... I mean, let's obviously start with this one because it's the only one that will be a pasture for the first year. Uh, but then after that, we're also going to need, what is it, a sheep or something? A few sheep? Livestock trading post enables trading livestock with trade points and other settled regions. So what does that mean exactly? Like, how do I purchase livestock, chat? Is this the thing you use? Or is this to connect up your regions? Trade points and other settled regions. So these are trade points, but they're work in progress. So I don't know if they would work. Okay, we can get a livestock trading post here just to see if it functions. You find them and tame them the old-fashioned way. Wild sheep. Well, I gotta start somewhere, right? You know what would really suck if it turns out that, like, we get nothing out of this? If the amount of food we actually get out of the fields is, like, negligible? That'll suck. See, the problem is, I don't actually know how much we're going to get out of each harvest. We can get, like, a whole, a whole thing of wheat. Cool. But, like much like if one morgan is equivalent to five wheat then that's gonna suck which field is fallow this year this one so we're building the uh the thing around it to turn it into a pasture when it's fallow oh yeah berry people you need to go back to working on berries i forgot uh because yeah we don't need I don't need any more of that. Hunting camp is fine. We kind of have everybody working on something. Maybe we don't actually need three families. Maybe we'll just go with two families there. And then we'll get two of those guys working there. Something like that. And the ruler's army was sighted. Yeah, so they're not going to attack us. They're going to clear out the camp. Which is fine, I just... I don't really know if that means anything for us. To get more families, Flyfed. Hey, Erica. Yeah, I mean, we're... Uh, no, you're right. You're actually completely right about that. Even if that might have been a joke, you are... Completely correct. I do need more families. We could do this. I think. Sweet, I haven't even played this yet. <laughs> No, but you are right, we do need more Burgage plots, because we have the maximum number of families, meaning I haven't been getting more people, which is stupid, because you always want to get more people. This is what happens when you're not actually paying attention to the video game you're playing, and you're, uh, kind of like, chatting with chat too much. Berries, berries, bursting with flavor. Well, for more families, getting outside and actually talking to a girl could help? No. 
What is this? What is this girl you speak of? What does that mean? I'm unfamiliar with the concept. Okay, right, so the ox, I completely forgot. We're supposed to assign the ox here. I'm so dumb. Plowing by hand. Yeah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> How do I make them not plow by hand? Because we have the thing, the heavy plow. It enables employing oxen at the farmhouse. So like, how do I, how do I do that? Uh, oh, permanent livestock. Okay. Total field workers. Okay, so this isn't done yet. This is still pretty early access. So we have one extra oxen that we're going to use to uh, plow things. So where is the oxen? Here it is. Peter the ox. He's going to help plow. But here's the thing. How does this... How does it function? So when... When these guys are done plowing, right? Ooh. Okay. So when these guys are done plowing and they're done sowing the seeds and we're just waiting for the crops to grow do they just do nothing like do i have to unassign them reassign them to other things and then when it's time for the harvest i can reassign them or what or do do they have to like stay there for the crops to grow i guess they have to tend to the crops don't they they probably have to like water them i guess I don't actually know. I don't know what these guys do when they're just waiting for the crops to grow. Hello Corbett, have we been overtaken by famine? Uh, only briefly. We fixed it. There was a point where we had two months of food remaining, but we're fine. Now we have three months. And we're farming and stuff. There we go. People are moving in. That's great. You aren't famine maxing. Yeah, unfortunately. One day. If they ever add... AI opponents in the game. We will be famine maxing. Livestock trading post. Okay, so if you want to trade. Oh god, that is money. Locked because the trade rule is set to no trade. Okay, so you can import things. I see. Wait, so there are lambs and there are... Lambs and there are sheep. What's the difference? Lambs don't have an image. I always assumed that lambs were baby sheep. Am I wrong about that? Because it seems like purchasing lambs would be much cheaper. Lambs are baby sheep. Yeah, I'm just wondering why they're like different categories. Okay, you know what? We can import two. It's 20. We are not importing two lambs. We're broke. Never mind. <laughs> Storage is full for the woodcutter's lodge. I mean, yeah, we have a lot of... Oh my god, we have 17 months of fuel. Okay, I mean... Yeah, that means that the general storage is also almost completely done. Okay. We can ease up a little bit of the storage by creating militia. So these people in the militia are going to go and grab all the spears in the storehouse. And they're going to take them home. If you beat a bandit camp, you can get up to 100 gold. I just don't want people to die is the main problem. But, I mean... The people are expendable. At least to some extent. Well, 
Once you plant, you can reassign. Farm crops grow on their own. Nice. Well, you know, we do have... 20 spear militia. In theory, we could go and fight somebody. People are resources, and sometimes you need to spend those resources. Real. Oh, now I'm thinking like a real manor lord. Hmm. There is a camp over here we could go fight. How many people do you have? I don't know. It's probably going to be too many. I don't know how the combat works. I have no idea. I think I've seen combat once. And it didn't seem like much to me. It didn't make a lot of sense to me. And some people say that it just doesn't make sense. And maybe it doesn't. Even if the AI beats the bandits, the AI does not loot the camp, so you can just walk over and loot it? Wait, what? There was a camp over here. Somewhere. That the dude defeated, and I don't remember where it was. Can you? Okay, so we're gonna wait until this guy moves over here, because he's going for this camp, obviously. Look for an empty camp. Okay, so I know that there was one over here. This guy spawned in and then took it out. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Yeah, I'm not seeing it yet. Maybe it was over here? Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to keep looking for it forever, so that's fine. We're just going to wait until this guy over here. Because he's taking his sweet time. But he's moving some people over. Wait a second, what? Destroyed the windmill. Granary remains? Destroyed windmill? Hmm. Interesting. POV corporate looks for a bandit camp for two and a half hours. I would if I didn't stop myself. In fact, I'm still thinking about going back and checking. I know it was here. I know it was here somewhere and I just don't know where exactly. What would it even look like? Like a bunch of tents or... You know it would be even funnier if I were actually getting trolled and they, it just doesn't remain at all if I get one guide <laughs> also yeah they stole 15 leather which is like what half of our leather tents yeah once they spawn they're easier to find okay so surely I should be able to remember that this group is up here north of the empty patch surely I can remember that Eight people requirements not met. Well, yeah, because we had 15 leather stolen from us. I mean, that's like half our entire leather supply. Yeah, we have like nothing in the clothing stall anymore because it all got stolen. Come on, come on. 
they do decay if uninhabited over time. Okay, so it's probably gone at this point. Hi, Rianu Keeves. Okay, so everybody's fine, really. Oh yeah, how's the uh, the whole whole thing going? Yeah, we have no livestock because we're so broke. But uh, give it enough time, we'll be less broke. Shoes, clothes, or cloaks. So I think what we want to do is probably... You know what, actually? We could import one lamb. And we'll get someone assigned to this. Yeah. So we're going to get one guy to go out, grab a few things for us. How's the foraging, by the way? Okay, I think the foraging is not going as quickly as it should. Have I raised what on the peasants? Taxes on the peasants? No, I can't. Not yet, because I think I need a manor for that. Or, uh, whatever it's called. Yeah. So it requires a settlement level of a small village. And then I would be able to build a manor. So basically we need more people. Also, I do have my one development point. Yes, yeah, so we do want sheep breeding. I think what we're going to do is have sheep in the fallow field, which will increase the fertility. And then they will cycle from here into here, into here, and then back into here. If that's possible, I don't even know. And even tax max, real. No taxes, Sedge. I kind of like this city that we've built. It feels a lot more like... Okay, except for the obvious grid building on this side. It feels kind of natural, just ignore the Among Us. Like over here, eh, this isn't so bad. I think sheep have... I hate how YouTube cuts off everything. I think sheep have their own pastures you have to build. I mean, we do have the thing that allows you to upgrade pastures, but maybe there's a different one? Oh... What? No, that's stupid. Wait, no. Allows you to use a fallow field as a pasture, which rapidly restores lost fertility. Wait, what? So we can't use... We can't use the fallow field? Is that, is that what you're saying? Oh, there we go. Hey, 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 okay, okay, okay. Remember, the tents were just north of this open patch here, and they just cleared them out. It was right here. It was right here. It is no longer right here. So now what? I don't see any gold yet. Like, it was so recent that these guys are still in the region. 
and I still I don't see anything. See if on the tab where you can select fallow, if you can select a pasture option. Okay, so is this this is a livestock pasture space? Space for your sheep and lambs to graze? Okay. I think we're chilling. We're gonna import a few lambs, I suppose. Oh, I wait, I guess we'll have to have something to feed the sheep, won't we? We don't actually have any wheat for that. Maybe we don't want to import sheep yet. Maybe that's gonna have to be next year. One, because we don't have a lot of population. Two, because we don't have a lot of money and we don't have any food to feed the sheep, assuming they need to be fed, which I am assuming. Okay, so these guys are done sowing the seeds. Everything's growing now. What else do we need? I mean, it's really just a problem of food, but I guess we can assign another person there. We have quite a lot of leather. I think what we could do at this point is grab a Burgage plot and upgrade to a, uh, a cobbler's workshop. It only costs five gold. But if you do that, then you can get uh, shoes, which are pretty good. They make people happy having shoes, generally. But I think I'm going to put... It's going to be one of the ones next to the tannery. It might actually be this one. So where do you work? Unassigned. Perfect. Now you're going to make shoes. Oh yeah, we could also start producing shields, couldn't we? Using planks. Although we don't have a lot of planks, but I think what we should do is uh, put someone in the saw pit. And then the next family that comes in here, we can uh, have them work on something. Like, we're definitely going to need more burgage plots. That's not good. Production focus? Yeah, okay, so artisan workshops. Work area is empty. That's not good for the logging camp. Uh, I think I said we also want to expand up here. But I think if I do that, I would want to move the logging camp. It's so far away. So instead, you're going to clear out this region. Are the raiders near? Uh, no, they're 300 days until the raiders attack. And even then, I feel pretty confident in saying that the AI is going to take them out instead. Get a Fletcher. What would a Fletcher take? Not you. Boyer? I guess that's what you mean, a boyer. Enables production of war bows. Might not be a bad idea. Alternative to a farm is a pasture, which grass for free yeah so so they do consume food I guess is what you're saying if I put them on a field the reason why I want to have them on a field is because using this rotation assuming the rotation even works like this is that it's going to increase the yield from the crops in theory that's what it says, at least. So it says... Allows 
use of a fallow field as a pasture, which rapidly restores lost fertility. So that's what I'm hoping, right? I want two years and then one year where it's fallow, where the sheep graze and increase the fertility. That's what I'm hoping. Ah, uh, yeah, the storehouse is probably full, isn't it? Full of firewood, of course it is. Because we have 17 months of fuel. Okay, so you know what? You're actually done. <laughs> You're done chopping down trees, buddy. We have a year and... Okay, I was going to say a year and a half, but not quite. Of fuel, so I think we're fine. Ooh, high population growth, huge. Nice. Actually, I do want to see combat a little bit. So we'll check back on that in a minute. Alright, how's the... Eh, uh, okay, not great. Even with four people foraging, it just takes so long to pick up the berries. Like, they walk over, they pick up one berry, and then walk all the way back. Like, they've never heard of a basket or something? I've never heard of, I don't know, like a, a, a cart, like a, even a wheelbarrow would work, I imagine. But like any kind of logistics, like you can have, you can have like a few people bring the cart, you can have a few people picking berries and then, I don't know, meet halfway or something, like anything at all to make that speed up, nothing. I guess. Pastures can be built anywhere and grass grows for free, even on infertile land. Yeah, for sure. There we go, more families. So how's the clothing supply? Pretty decent. Yeah, we have shoes, we have more shoes, some leather. That's something. I guess we should upgrade the size of the storehouse, though. It's kind of weird that this side doesn't seem like it's growing, but the other side is. What does this mean, chat? One half of the field is not growing, the other half is. Is that a visual bug, or is that something important? plant the other half maybe it said sewing progress 100% I don't know Yeah, so sheep don't give you food, they give you wool. Yeah. So like the... Yeah. I think in, what I had in mind was that the, uh, the main point of the sheep wasn't so much to get like the wool, but also to rejuvenate the fields. 
But for sure, I mean, the wool's gonna be nice. Because we already have leather stuff, but we, yeah, we want clothing. And dye you get from berries, if I remember correctly. Which is why it's such a big problem that uh, we suck at getting berries. In fact, I wonder if it would be possible. Just, just uh, yeah, you know what? Out of curiosity, so you transport berries, but you're Peter. Well, you're a granary worker. So you know what I'm thinking, actually? The granary workers. If the granary workers can carry 10 things at a time using these, but each one of these foragers can only carry one berry at a time. In other words, one person with a cart can carry 10 times as many as one person here. So if we want this to be more efficient, we actually want to move the forager hut much closer to where the berries are. Does that make sense? Because clearly we're not picking the berries fast enough, even with four people. But if we move the berry hut or the foraging hut, yeah, if we move the foraging hut closer, then they have less distance to travel. In fact, if we put it next door, then all four of them could just go like back and forth like that really quickly. So in theory, we want to move this. In practice, who knows? But in theory, we want this to be faster. So we want it to be closer. So that the people who carry the berries back, granary workers, have no problem. And yeah. Can you disable that the berries carry the berries back to town? So the, the berry people carry them back to the foraging hut and they leave them here and then they go back to the berry patch. So the people who work in the hut, they go back and forth, right? They just go back and forth a bunch of times. They can only carry one thing. So they don't actually carry them back to town. The people who carry them back to town don't work here. They work here in the granary. They go from here to here with a cart and pick up all the stuff here and go back. So we do want it to be closer. In fact, much closer. I might even say we want to go as far as to build a road here. It sort of deviates a little bit from this path. Sort of winds over to this direction where the berries are. Oh, but if I'm gonna do that, I would want it to be closer, wouldn't I? Yeah, you know, Pythagorean theorem and all that. Okay, so we're gonna start the road actually this direction. So instead of going, you know, up the road and then to the right, they can just go as quickly as possible. Alright, let's do that then. There we go, there we go. Just gonna put it through the trees. Oh, you can only build so many? Darn, okay. <laughs> we'll have to extend the road. And then actually, we'll need even fewer people to work on getting the berries. So we should be able to relocate the hut from here up to here. And this should be close enough, I think. Probably. Anyway, it'll take them a while to move things around. Yeah, yeah, exposed goods, because the berries over here are now sitting on the ground, but whatever. Berries are seasonal, right? Yeah. So it's May, which means they're still growing. I think in the summer they don't grow anymore. And then... No, maybe they do grow in the summer. 
They grow in the spring, maybe the summer. They don't grow in the fall. And then I think they shrink during winter. But they might shrink during fall as well, I don't know. I guess, uh, well, I mean, how close are we to finishing this? Oh, there we go, large storehouse. Okay, so you can start working on stone, I guess. Just cuz. Seems like the crops are kind of not growing all that much. 15%. 12%. Hold on, let me do a little bit of an experiment. Because for some reason, I feel like you have to have people there for it to grow. Because I, I haven't seen any growth since we stopped assigning people to this. So I feel like you do need them there. So we're going to wait until it reaches 17% to see how long it takes. We're just going to do a little bit of testing. Because it seems to me like it's taken a long time. But maybe I'm crazy? 17%, okay. And if we unassign people? How long does that take? If it still grows, then we're fine. I think that's it refreshing every now and then. Which means it should, it should still be growing. Okay, well, we know it's 7%. Oh, okay, hold on. I was about to say, we know it's 17%. We can go back, but okay. So they do grow when they're not being uh, looked after. So that's fine. Also, yeah, we can get another... Upgrade that to level 2. Still not a lot of food. Yeah, that's the main problem. Oh, there we go. Gonna build something? Nope, you're picking up berries. Wait, what? <laughs> what? Okay. What else can we get people to work on? Oh yeah, wooden shields. We do want people to work on shields. You can work on shields. Maybe I should have chosen somewhere that's a little bit closer, but I guess I can't really get rid of that now, can I? Well, that's too bad. So instead of importing shields, which will cost money, we're going to make shields and import spears, I think. So I don't think we can build spears. I think we would need mining for that. Workers use iron slabs to craft tools. What do we need tools for? Oh yeah, we can change that later. Wait, so we can get an armorer's workshop, a bowyer's workshop, joiner's workshop. Okay, a blacksmith's workshop is where you build spears. Okay. Hold on, let me get a little bit more water. Okay, so we have a little bit of money, tiny bit of regional wealth. Not enough to build or to buy two lambs though, right? Yeah, because 20 import price, that's crazy. 20 for one lamb. Yeah, when the field is ready to harvest, it will be clearly obvious you need to reassign workers back to the farm. Yeah, I assumed as much. I mean, we could get the lambs now. We do have the money. 
You know what I should do? I should get a trading post. I should put it... You know, I don't actually know how... I don't know how the traders interact. So, do they have to leave the city? Do they actually need to travel to these points to export things? I don't know. So I always feel like, oh yeah, the, the trading post should be on the outskirts. You know, so that wandering merchants come by and they don't have to go into town, they can just purchase stuff here. At least conceptually, that's how I imagine it would work the best. Just slap one down, like, right there. And the reason for that is because I think we want to... You know, when we have the Joiner's Workshop, they're going to produce large shields. But we're not going to need all that many large shields. We only need so many as, you know, 36. At least for the time being. And then later on, we can, uh, you know... I guess create a larger army. But until then, we can just export shields. The only problem is that to start an export route, you need to have money. So to make money, you need to have money. Which is unfortunate. Unless we have, uh, what is it? Establishing a new trade route always costs a maximum of 25. That would be nice. Hey, there we go. Look at that. A little bit of growth. I'm really glad that the, uh... The crops are actually rendering this time. Because the last game I played, it didn't look like they were rendering. I didn't see, like, any crops, even though there were, you know, supposed to be crops. So it was a little bit concerning, but... Crops left in the field too long will rot, so it's an all-hands-on-deck event, needing temporary borrowing any available until the harvest is done. Well, we can only have a maximum of, like, eight people working there. So, uh, but, yeah, you're right, actually. That would make sense. Come one, come all. Okay, yeah, so food is becoming a problem. Because we still haven't finished constructing the forager's hut. And I get that it's really far away, but I feel like that should be done already. Uh... Gathering. No, okay, so we actually just don't have anything happening here. I think what we need to do is unassign a livestock here, which I should have done to start with. It's kind of my fault, actually. The entire reason we're starving is because I didn't free up an ox. So yeah, we don't have a lot of food. Big problem. We're wasting a lot of berries actually trying to move this thing. Maybe I should have, should have built a second one instead of move one of them. See, it, it'll take pretty much the same amount of time and we could have had people working on stuff. So maybe that was a bad idea. And then when we're done here, we're going to need to assign someone to the windmill to grind it all down to flour. Then we're going to need the communal oven to make it into bread. So yeah, food problems. Let's go. I think people are going to starve, probably. <laughs> Bowyers making bows are the easiest weapon to make. They only need wood. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Well, it actually doesn't make sense. I feel like they should need more than wood. Like bowstrings? Or like wool or anything, I feel like. Should be necessary, but... Whatever, that is what it is. like if you built a spear but you didn't need like metal or stone or anything just wooden spear i mean possible doable it would suck oh my god we have uh wait a minute it's 102 stone i don't think we need all that much could we like we like export stone <laughs> export price is one per stone hey you know what how much stone do we have 77. Let's not sell the stone. We do not have a large stone deposit. Never mind, we're keeping that. In fact, it wouldn't even be that bad to pick up all the stone, 
ship all the stone away. Ship, you know what I mean. Take all the stone from here, move it into the warehouse. This area gets freed up for farming. Then we're cooking. Archer militia are powerful but harder to use versus brigands. Oh shoot, I forgot we wanted to look at the combat here, but that's long gone. Well, that's unfortunate. Does the terrain make any impact on combat? Like if you're in a forest, are archers less efficient? I was gonna say, it's kind of weird that we don't have enough planks, and then I remember, oh yeah, we're building shields. How many do we have? No shields. You're making shields. Okay, and you're sick. That's not good. It's not good because we don't have any herbs. That dude is dead. And we're still not building the forager's hut. Uh, yeah, there's got to be someone on his way over, right? It's June. We need food. We only have two months of food left. Surely there has to be someone on their way to construct. There you go. Come on, Gerhaz. Your family moved in? Okay, that's fine. I mean, not really. We don't have any food. Shoes can be exported. Yeah... The problem is, I don't think we have a lot of shoes. 12 shoes. 4 shoes. We have a total of 18 shoes. I assume one family once per month is going to need shoes. But I don't know if that's true. I assume everything that people need will be consumed monthly. So like if you need fuel, they'll buy one fuel per month. If they need food, they will buy one of each type per month. Clothing, one of each type per month. That's what I'm assuming. I don't know if that's how it works. So in terms of clothing, we only have so many months as well. Months left as well, yeah. You know what, we could actually get a lot more goat farms. In fact, that might even be a self-sustaining loop of money. If we buy goat farms to get more hides, then the tannery can work more consistently to create more boots to export for more clothing so we can get more hides from goats. We just need everybody to uh, accept goats into their backyard, and I think that's fine. Here you go, want to have goats? <laughs> Maybe goats wouldn't have been so good for this guy, though, because he actually has, like, some pretty decent space. I don't know. I know we're running out of food. I am more aware than anybody that we're running out of food. One month. I think we'll be fine. We can get four people to work on getting berries. See, they're right here. That's perfect. So you can go work on getting berries. It shouldn't be that hard to start actually getting a bunch of berries. Two months of food. Okay, yeah. Wait, where are you going? Wait. Getting a basket. From where? Wait, what? Uh? Transporting berries? Oh, they're getting a basket from the thing. Okay. Yeah, so chickens and vegetables can help with food. I have one chicken coop. Here. We just don't have a lot of money. Yeah, we'll have enough supplies. We'll probably survive. Probably. Is 
See, look, that's so much faster. They can just walk back and forth to get all the berries in here. And then every now and then, someone's going to come by with the larger thing, the, um, wheelbarrow, I guess. The cart. And then they can pick up everything. Well, not everything. They can pick up ten things at once. And if all else fails, at least we'll have some meat left, kinda. And then when we harvest, we'll have a bunch of wheat. Yield 34. Yield 27. Days left, left to harvest, 43, okay. So this is the higher yield, even though it looks like there's nothing here. Okay, whatever. Roof tiles make a level 2 church and level buildings. Level 3 buildings at our best sale. Sorry, sell price slash manufacturing difficulty export. Hmm. What do you mean clothes are a consumable resource? I've been wearing the same three shirts for like five years now. Yeah, I have a collection of like five or six white shirts that I cycle through regularly. I have a bunch of other shirts, but I think... Honestly, I just prefer to wear, like, plain t-shirts. Give me a white t-shirt or a black t-shirt. That's it. That's all I need. It's actually kind of funny when I explain to my mom, like, oh yeah, I just like really normal kind of clothing, you know? I'm not huge with, like, name brands or anything. And then my mom was super surprised. She's like, what? What do you, what do you mean you don't like name brands? <laughs> I guess there's sort of like something to say about the idea that name brands that like put their name on the shirt kind of show other people that you spent money on the more expensive shirt, but like I... It's kind of weird. Anyway, we're only going to produce the finest of uh, luxury clothing in this medieval village. I think that we should have manor lords, but it's in China so we can produce silk clothing. Or in uh, Byzantium, after they stole the, uh, the silkworm eggs. So we can produce silk. Okay, so food crisis seems to have been averted. Oh yeah, I guess we are going to need more firewood at some point. Hunting camp is fine, maintaining the population. We have a little bit of clay, but it's not a lot. I don't think I would want to export roof tiles. I feel like we'll, we'll only have a little bit of clay to work with. So maybe we don't really want to export. We can export iron, because we have a ton of iron. Absolutely ridiculous amount of iron. In fact, it might even be a decent idea to set up an export for iron. I mean, how bad would that be? Blocks? Okay, whatever. Uh, commodities, materials... Iron slab. What does this actually produce? Get iron ore. Can you not export iron ore? No, you can. Okay. It only costs 18 as well. And 3 for each one? That's... Not even terrible. I mean, we have so much iron. Don't sell iron, make weapons and sell them. Okay, well, what do I need to make weapons? I need the iron, of course, obviously. But if I want to make weapons, then what do I need? Okay, well, I'll obviously need to upgrade the Burgage plot there, but... K, 
Okay, so we're not even close to that, though. We need more population. Okay, I'm at max population again because I'm stupid, and I keep forgetting that I need to, uh... families. That we can support. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you're actually not doing anything, so... Okay. If we want to set up... Crafting spears and selling spears, or tools, or whatever, I mean... What's the best trade? Military gives us, for spears, that's 16. For mail armor, that's 18. Sidearms, 18. Pole arms, 18. Helmets, 16. Plate armor, 18. If we wanted to sell just iron slabs just iron slabs at 14 isn't that bad i mean even iron ore at sorry no i'm, I'm wrong about that I'm, i was looking at the import price sorry i was looking at the wrong numbers entirely so to export iron is three not 13 iron slabs four side arms eight pole arms eight okay so we need spears just to have spears for our infantry, or for our militia, I guess. And then later we might swap to... something else? I don't know. Depends on the resources it takes. If you can make a spear with, like, one iron, or you can make, like, mail with two iron, then you would prefer to just export the spear, because it doesn't cost... like, you don't get as much money, but it doesn't cost double. We'll see. Anyway, we have cleared out the region that I was hoping to clear out. Might clear out this next, although it'll be a little bit annoying. Now nah, let's not clear that. We're not going to clear this either, because there are animals living there. We can clear this, I guess. Alright, when is the harvest? 30 days. How about those berries? Running out soon? Okay, I think we're okay now. I might also grab an herb garden. The only problem is it's gonna take so long for this to upgrade. I don't know if people are still going to be working here while it upgrades. But I figure we should probably get some kind of herbs. The sick people will eventually die, I imagine. I did see one sick person. I think. I don't know where. A medieval peasant would never have known the amazing taste of maple syrup. Can you imagine how awful that was? Real. You know, fun fact, I actually have two entire... bottles, I guess, of maple syrup just sitting on a shelf. In my room. On my bookshelf, actually. I've just been chilling there. Even when I moved out, I brought them with me. I always keep that thing on me, you know what I mean? <laughs> I need that herb, me lord. <laughs> Alright. We need to get some more living places. Did a little thing this direction. Don't know if I like it. I mean, it's kind of all right. Rather than just having rows and rows of people. Pass those bottles down to your children. Yeah, I don't know. Does maple syrup even expire? I don't think it does. Maybe the sugar crystallizes, but I don't think it expires. Kind of like honey, I think. Or maybe it's actually the sugar which keeps it from expiring. Can you preserve things in sugar? Is that how it works? I 
actual maple syrup can grow mold? Okay, so maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Okay, so the berry deposit has been pretty much destroyed. Well, not destroyed. It'll grow back. I'm just going to wait for them to finish grabbing the last few berries because they're not regrowing. And that'll be enough food for not even close to the entire winter. Like, not even slightly. Like, we're going to die. Pretty much. In theory, if we don't die, though... Yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. We might die. I actually don't think we're going to have enough food for the winter. Hmm. Okay, so that's not growing anymore. So you guys are pretty much done. So I'm going to replace that with, uh, with herbs, just so you can get more herbs. So do an early harvest of the wheat. Nah, I mean, 12 days, nah. We can wait 12 days. Alright, what if we build of a road over here. And so this church road has sort of become really more connected to the entire city. Bandit camp. Okay. Chat, could we kill these guys? I think we could kill them. Probably. We just get enough militia, march them over. You know, three to four business months, we can take them out take a really long time ruler's army was sighted okay who's gonna get there first this guy or me camps over here oh that's a tough one actually by my calculations that was a cringe thing to say okay no I think we're gonna get there first if we if like right now we go we just don't have enough spears which is a huge problem, because we don't have money to import spears. I don't have money at all. <laughs> oh yeah, wasn't I gonna sell... I have shields, don't I? Like a lot of shields that I can sell? Nope, one shield. That can't be right. Oh, right, because we only have one surplus, technically. We were filling out the rest of the thing. Yeah, I know, I said by my calculations. I, I cringed as soon as I said it. You don't have to point out the cringe. Okay, so we just don't have the spears to raise an entire militia, and I don't think we would win if we don't have an entire militia, because, like, this looks like about 20 guys. I mean, if we decided to build bows and then raise an archer levy, then maybe? I don't even think we'd have enough people for that. You need at least 15. Well, darn. <laughs> Because we have a total population of 57. If we raise a militia, that is raising 36 of that population. Over half the population would go into the militia. Oh yeah, I did get the, um, the other goat thing, right? So we have a few shoes. I guess we could export shoes, couldn't we? 
Except no, because we don't have enough money to actually export anything. Although I am glad that the prices have been changed for establishing trade routes. Because a few days ago, I'm pretty sure it cost something like over 100 for some trade routes. Just to establish them, which is crazy. So this is much better. Although it's still going to be expensive. Uh, we only need to export shoes though, which is going to take 48 to establish a trade route. Whew. Is it fall? Then you can risk it. Risk sending people over. I don't know about that one. We also need people for the harvest, right? Like the harvest is literally in four days. So like we're not, we're not doing that. We're going to need all hands on deck for the harvest. And then we're going to need people in the windmill. Only in fall? Okay, so you mean after the harvest. There we go, it's fall. Oh, we have 365 days to harvest, that's a long time. Okay, well, we can, uh... We can get let's go with four people maybe now nah, you know let's, let's get everybody let's get everybody we possibly can like we don't need the stone cutters hut anymore in fact there's no stone here so you can swap jobs uh we have enough planks so you can stop that and you can go work on this we need everybody all hands on deck we got to harvest this wheat and we got to process it into grain or, uh, well, yeah, we actually do need to process it into grain. And then we need to grind that grain into flour. And then we also need to build a uh, communal oven. I don't know where I would put that, but I guess sort of where everything is over here. So the oven could be... Well, I don't know. Let's say that the oven goes here. Yeah, that's fine. We just don't have any uh, unemployed people to work on that. But we do have enough fuel so we can move one guy. How to get access to the game? Isn't it early access right now? Yeah, so like if you have a YouTube channel and you ask them nicely, then they tend to say yes. Well, it varies. That's not like technically completely correct, but for the most part. Look at that. Ooh, harvesting like machines. Look at them go. So how are we looking for that? We're looking at nothing because they need to finish harvesting. Nice. Uh, hey, hey guys, you uh missed a few spots. Is anyone gonna? Yeah, you gonna go pick that up? There you go. That was fast. So how are we looking? That's not a lot of wheat, bro. <laughs> That's not a lot of wheat. Ooh, I don't know about that. That's really, uh, really not a lot. Okay, well, let's get everybody to, to bring all the wheat in. There's no way you're carrying one wheat at a time. Brother. Okay, are we all done? Transporting wheat. Going home. So all the wheat has been stored. Okay, so they got to process it into grain as well. I forgot about that. The people working at the farmhouse process it into grain. Uh, they're claiming Goldhof, but what am I going to do? Say no? Me and what army? Uh, 
All right, let's get someone, uh, two people here. Maybe even three to work in the windmill. Maybe even, uh, now let's get one person off that to work in the oven. Because, yeah, we need food. And eventually, we don't want to use the berries for food. We'll want to use the berries for dyes at some point. So we can make clothing. <laughs> that mill to field shape is exquisite. Yeah, I kind of like this. This design. Okay, so I did borrow this from OPB. One proud Bavarian, because I watched. I think it was the the second maybe, second video he made for Manor Lords, and I really liked what he did with this, where he had the windmill and then he had the the field surrounding it. Also because it's conveniently pretty good for crop rotation, right? So we can have you know three different kinds of crop rotation to make sure we also always get a decent yield. Although, I don't know how decent that yield is. Okay, yeah, we also need more families. Seems like we're getting a little better at feeding ourselves. That's good. So if we can, yeah, if we can start cooking a whole bunch of bread, then that should last us the winter, probably. Decent amount of flour. If you're unassigned, you can work in the oven, I guess. And once all the threshing is done, I imagine we're not going to go back to... Yeah, so the harvest is done completely. Meaning that there's nothing for these people to go back and do once they're done with the last wheat. Which I assume they will be done with at some point. There you go. So now you're done. You don't have to work on that. You can work on that until the flour is processed. Work on the oven. Uh, I still don't have enough money to establish a trade route. That'll take a few months, I think. But in the meantime, we could actually upgrade more of our burgage plots. So we have that one that's level one. This one that's level one. Because upgrading them would give us more money each month. We do have two oxen. Using one field a year, why not two? No, we're using two. On year one, this is the foul. Uh, not a foul. <laughs> this is the fallow one on year one. Year two, this is the fallow one. Year three, this is the fallow one. So every year, there's going to be two fields, which aren't fallow. And then the third one, which is fallow, is going to be where we keep the sheep because that'll, you know, re-fertilize the territory or whatever. Okay, yeah, you're done. I just don't know what happens if I remove you. Okay, it's whatever, I guess. It's almost been four hours. I've been streaming for four hours, chat. There's no way. Feels like I've been here for maybe an hour and a half or two. Time flies when you're mismanaging a city. It's kind of nice though. This is probably the nicest city I've built so far. Including the Among Us. Because of the Among Us. Just enjoying the game, yeah. It's pretty good, been having a lot of fun with it. More fun than a lot of other recent games, to be honest. So, 
like my friends bought you know how like uh the steam share new family feature is like cool like you can do a lot of things with it so my friends bought dragon's dogma 2 and i booted it up and i played for the first like four hours and i don't know i just i'm, I'm afraid i'm starting to not enjoy rpgs anymore which is kind of sad because i used to really love playing rpgs but now when i open an rpg i'm like i look at that and to me it's like i'm not opening a video game i'm opening i'm opening an 80 hour commitment right when i play an rpg compared to like another game like uh any kind of grand strategy game that i play what i'm looking at is at most i don't know 10 maybe 15 hours of investment if i want to do like a full run of something it really depends you know depends on the game depends on what i'm doing like if i want to play a full run of vic 3 that's like what two or three evenings doesn't take that long maybe four but if i want to like play an rpg i'm like ah it's like 80 hours <laughs> oh my god i don't know if i have time for that so like i've been very slowly but surely progressing through tales of arise which a viewer bought for me for my birthday two years ago and i've been slowly progressing through it i am just the slowest person when it comes to rpgs i think i have like 45 hours in the game but i'm i don't even know how close i am to finishing it my friend said i think it took him like 80 hours to beat and i'm like oh god i'm not even close am i So, yeah, getting old or something like that. Which has me even more worried for when they eventually release Elder Scrolls 6, because obviously I'm going to want to play that. But also, I'm afraid of two things. One, that it's going to be bad. It's pretty obvious, I guess. <laughs> you know, uh, in light of recent Bethesda releases, I'm not exactly looking forward to uh, Elder Scrolls 6 all that much, if I'm being honest. We're going to move that there. Uh, we're going to move that with high priority. But also, it's not even just like, oh, if, is it going to be bad? Because even if it's a good game, I'm thinking, dude, I'm only going to put like 15 hours into it and I'm going to feel bad because even if it's good, I'm not going to play that much. Because, chat, I didn't even finish Baldur's Gate 3. I know. Literally game of the year. I put 40 hours in to just act one. And then I got to act two and I'm like, man, I have grinded in this game just to get to the end of act one. And you're telling me there are two more acts? 40 hours to finish act one. Dude. Yeah. Corbett on the decrepit old man arc. I feel like that's not an arc. I feel like that's permanent. I don't feel like there's any going back from that. Act one is the best and smallest. Yeah, that's the thing. 40 hours, chat. 40 hours through act one. I will probably go back and finish it. I mean, I have a giant list of games that I need to play. Like, chat, I also have Pokemon Violet. It's on my shelf, and I have had it for over a year, and it is still in the plastic wrapping of the case. Like, literally, store condition. Mint store condition. And I haven't even opened it. On a positive note, now you can enjoy new pastimes, such as reading newspapers and such. I don't know. Oh, please, I'm not that old. Not yet. I'll be old when I decide to... Oh, no. I was gonna say, when I decide to go and sit down and read a book. 
rather than play a video game, but I, I have done that multiple times. Like, recently. I think it's over for me, chat. So that's three families in a workshop. I don't like the shape of it, it's kind of ugly. That's too bad. Sometimes things are ugly. Like me. But you guys still watch me anyway. Do manga count as books? Well... I mean, I would say yes, but that's not even what I was referring to. <laughs> so there's a, there was a book series that I have been slowly chipping away at over time. Because the first book was really good, and then the second book was kind of not as good, but apparently the third book is better. It's called the, uh, the Children of Time series. It's pretty good. Oh, also, uh, I've been collecting manga at this point. Just to touch back on the manga point, I now own two volumes of the Vinland Saga manga hardcover copy. I want to, I want to collect any sort of like, any manga that don't have like a ton of volumes. I want to like collect hardcover copies. But, I don't know about, uh... I don't know about otherwise. Like, I, w I don't think I would collect, uh, Naruto. In hardcover, because that's like a lot of volumes. But, uh, Vinland Saga, and another one is Berserk. So, I got the first volume of the, uh, hardcover deluxe edition of the Berserk... ...series. Oh, there you go. I want the Berserk hardcovers. There you go. Even more based, yeah. And, like, there really is something about, like, seeing it in print in your hands. Dude, the artwork is insane. I mean, I always knew that Miura's work was fantastic, but... Like, seeing it in person, full ink in your hands, larger pages because it's the deluxe edition, it's... It's incredible. That guy was a prodigy, honestly. Such a good artist. I'm so sad Berserk will never be finished. I believe they are beginning to uh, to release the new version or the, the new... Because they're still making it, by the way. His uh, apprentices, I believe, are carrying on his work. And who knows how that will go. I hope it does well. But, uh, you know, we, we've seen a few cases of IPs that get picked up. Which are maybe, like, not... Not really well kept afterwards, you know what I mean? Like, the one that would come to mind would be... The, the elephant in the room, Ruby. That after, uh, after Monty's unfortunate passing, I believe that the direction of the series was, uh, not the right direction. Wait, chat, do I seriously only have four months of food still? Even after the harvest? Oh, we're really not making it through the winter, are we? That's kind of over for us, isn't it? I thought we'd be saved. <laughs> I thought we could save ourselves, but no, uh, we're kind of cooked. Okay, we don't need this. We can demolish it. There's literally no point in having it. But man, really? Even all that? Well, I mean, we haven't finished making the food, actually. That's true. We're not done producing the food. So I'm going to bring people back to the communal oven, actually. So I just realized, no, we still have 98 flour. We still have a significant amount of flour. I think it's fine. 
Well, it wasn't even that good. Ruby? Uh, arguable. It certainly felt like it had more charm in the uh, first few seasons. It felt like there was more there, you know? That's why I got so many families. Work. Oh, so many free families. Oh, because, uh, no work. So I need to figure out something for them to do. Actually, you know what? Yeah, we can just have two people to permanently transport things. Is every... Uh, no, we can upgrade these. We should upgrade all the burgage plots, actually. As much as possible. It kind of takes a long time for the farmhouse or for the windmill to carry over the flower over to the communal oven. Is there a way to make that go faster? Because it seems like the people who are taking stuff from the windmill are carrying one thing of flour each. Which is fine, because I mean, it's a bag of flour, that can be pretty heavy. So sure. But also... We kind of need to transport the flour. <laughs> Also, I guess what I could do is I could spend money on the plots to upgrade them. Oh, hold on a second. No, you're you're actually kind of right, because I pulled a lot of people away to work on the farm without putting them back. So there are a few missing jobs, probably. Yeah, there's no one working in the saw pit, but there should be, because we do need planks in order to produce shields so that we can export shields for money. I don't know what I was doing. So we can get that and another logging camp or another dude in the logging camp. I don't think we need this many people in the communal oven. It, it, I mean, it just takes so long. Well, no, that's the problem, isn't it? Because each person who works in the oven has to move all the way back over here to grab a bag of flour. So if we have one person in the oven, yeah, if we have one family working in the communal oven, then it'll just be one person bringing one flower at a time. Except you. The Giga Chad Yorg himself has figured out that you can load more flour onto a cart and bring it that way instead of one at a time. This is what we call innovation. Oh, never mind. He's going somewhere else entirely. <laughs> yeah, never mind. He's uh, bringing them all the way over to the granary. Turns out Yorg is actually an idiot. Well, that sucks. Can you show me the sheep farm and how it works? Tragically, the sheep farm is not up and working yet because we need to generate wealth. Not you. Uh, from this. So we need money in order to import lambs so that we can actually have sheep. So I think we're going to start having sheep next year. But for the time being, we want to export stuff. And we do have a lot of large shields that we want to export because they're pretty easy to make. So, uh, sure, why not? We want to export. What is full trade? Trade until the desired surplus is reached. Okay, no, 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 no. We just want to export. Desired surplus. I wish I could hold that down. Kind of like shift click. Oh, there you go. Okay. So I think we're going to want 10. Maybe, maybe 5, actually. We don't need that many. But we should be able to export a whole lot. Although they might have recently introduced uh, the anti-trade feature or the anti-spam feature. I don't remember what you would call that, but there is something you can do where uh, 
or there is a feature that was added, maybe not yet, but in theory, where if you trade too much of one thing, then it reduces the export price. Apparently. Game seems so peaceful, Death War when? Well, it's not so much about a, a conquering game as it is really just a city builder. But we could do combat once I feel comfortable doing combat. Which I think would be when we have like a... When we look at our militia, right now we only have a few spears. But I think what I want is archers, spear militia, maybe pole arms? I don't know what the difference is. Because like the pole arms, they just don't have shields. So wouldn't that be worse? Like what kind of military tactics are we using here? Like, are we going to have the the shield wall and then we're going to have people with pikes poke through the shield wall? Okay, so we have more food now. Five months. We're going to make it through the winter. We're chilling. Total War style, I think. Oh, great. Okay, so I, I've never played a Total War game in my life. This should be interesting. Alright, I've been looking at expanding this area for a while, so I'm just going to do that. Are the raiders near? In a hundred days, the raiders will be here. Requirements not met. What is your problem? Oh, right, it's because it's been a month and you haven't been upgraded yet. That's why. That's fine. So right now what we're doing is uh, exporting a bunch of shields for money and then we're going to import a couple of spears because we're not ready to make spears yet. There we go. Money, look at that chat. 122 wealth. Actual money. What does the horse do, by the way? society hasn't advanced enough to make pointy sticks real well i could check to see what the spears require but oh hold on a second wait okay sorry i lost my train of thought Really quickly. Horses for trading, apparently. Okay, thank you. That's good to know. I guess the horse is for imports, and people will just stop by to grab things for export, maybe? Like, who are you? You look like a traveling merchant. You look like a strapping young lad in need of a shield. Maybe a few shields? Please buy, please buy the shields. <laughs> please. Please, please, please. Yes. Go on. We have plenty of shields. You can go on. Anyone want to buy some shields? Come on, man. <laughs> hey, listen, buddy. Come on, you sure you don't want to buy some shields, man? Are you sure about that? Uh, okay, fuck off. Okay, so in theory, we uh, we sell shields for uh, for money. Sometimes. Oh yeah, what about shoes? We can export shoes, can't we? Ninety-six to establish a trade route. Ah, oh, damn. Okay. But do we even have? I don't think we have enough money for that. I think what we should do is import however many spears we need to import. Because I mean, it's so expensive to do both, right? If we want to import spears, that's 86 to establish that trade route. 
And then we have to import the spears. Which will cost 17 a piece. God, that's expensive. I mean, we also apparently need more... Something. Let me check at the, like, uh, where the livestock are. Surely the livestock are doing something. Gathering. Oh, right, because we're chopping down trees in this vicinity over here. Right, we might even need another ox, actually. Move logs from here into the saw pit. I don't think we're going to export roof tiles only because we have a very limited amount of clay. Like, sure, we could export roof tiles, and then when we need roof tiles, we won't have roof tiles. And then we would have to import them. Which would be kind of expensive. Because, like, where's the next clay deposit? Oh, yeah, it's, uh, right over here. So I don't know about that. Livestock be livestocking. Real. So we might need to get another ox, actually. So there are two families that are handling the ox. They're transporting timber. Yeah, so they're transporting timber, I presume, back to here or here because we're chopping down trees over here so they want to bring the stuff back to here I just don't think we have enough well of a lot of things the strat is to export roof tiles and import clay wait hold on clay import 11 Export 8. So I'm assuming that's with this, the better deals. Is then that reduces all import prices by 10. So yeah, so the... So what we refer to as the trading cheese is really just maximizing the trading tree. Which I've seen people do, and I don't think I'm really a big fan of it, because apparently it's like not the way the game is supposed to be played, it's just something that's part of this build of the early access. So... Yeah. Anyway, I think we do need more houses, don't we? very cheesy it is, it is yeah it's very cheesy like never having to extract anything you just have to import everything and then you refine it and then export historically it did happen in a lot of places but for a city builder it's not much of a city building experience it's more like a trade hub building experience you just get people to manufacture goods and then export them without any farming or without anything else really yeah. You know what, actually? We can build another marketplace. I just realized. Oh, shoot. Zero available stall locations. No, 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 no. Surely we can get at least one least one inside of the backpack not even one well, that sucks okay well let's build some more burgage plots we 
Ooh, I think I'm cooking with this one. Hold on. I have an idea. Oh yeah, I'm cooking. There's that one. And then these ones, I actually want to have them like this. Plot too small. Nah, there's no way. What? I wanted to have it face this area of the road, but I, I guess I can't do that. I mean, I really, I want it to be like this, actually, so we have the house. So we can have houses towards this end instead of the other way, but... Well, darn. About that. Mmm, theoretical. Theoretically possible. You know what? Yeah, we can work with that. So I did mention grabbing another ox, didn't I? Yeah, because like these guys are doing nothing. Because we need someone to guide an ox. Okay, so we will have to purchase another ox. Which is fine, I guess. We're just going to have to build another stable. So we have one small stable here. We can build a, uh, what's it called? Hitching post? Yeah, there we go. You can build another one sort of close-ish, I guess. You can always move them. You can make money without importing, but you do have to focus territory growth towards grabbing those lucrative resources, in my honest opinion, not cheesy. The trade one, or...? I don't know, I do feel like the uh, import at the really low price export, you know, without having to get raw resources, eh, a little bit cheesy. Just a little bit. Requirements not met, well that's because you're cringe, and also because we haven't built things fast enough. Actually, let's put that at, uh, I. So we can build this, then order another, actually we can order another ox right now. We just need to make sure this is the highest priority. Winter is coming. Surely someone's going to build that quick enough, right? Very high priority. In theory, any day now, sometime this year, I was hoping. Just needs one person, please. One person needs to build it. The, the ox already brought the timber. We just need someone to... Oh, thank you. Jeez, the administration in this place, am I right? All right, perfect. So we have... When does the trader come with the ox? Oh no, we already have the ox. But wait, what? Zero out of one stable space. Oh, cause you have... Why do you have stable space? You shouldn't have stable space. Wait, and you can import through this? Am I... Wait, 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 wait. So you can order through... That's 20, and if you order through here, you get... Still 20. Okay, never mind. Never mind. So we, we already have the oxen. I don't know where it is. Okay, whatever. The main point is... 
We want to have a permanent livestock assignment here. So that it just moves stuff from the logging camp into the saw pit. Because we need more consistent plank production. So we can have more consistent shield production. So we can make more consistent money. Doesn't holding alt show the trader on the map? When I hold alt, it shows me nothing. So maybe there just isn't a trader? I don't know. Well, I mean, traders do every now and then walk around here, right? Okay, so we should have a dedicated permanent livestock assignment. We have three families that are permanent livestock guiders. Alt or tab, show the trader. Oh, that's crazy. That is far more useful than... I didn't think this mechanic was in the game. <laughs> that's pretty useful. That's kind of cool. So we can see what people are missing. So what is that? You're missing firewood? Well, that's because you're cringe. That's not my fault. What about you? You're still chopping down trees within a decent region, right? Well, just in case you're not. Oops. There we go. You can just start chopping down a larger area. Really want to clear this place out, and then eventually we're going to actually, you know, take stewardship over the forest and not, not just uh, chop it all down. Maybe that'll be over here or something. I don't know. On the outskirts. There we go. Now we actually have planks being produced. So we should have shields being produced and more money. The problem is we only have two months until we're attacked. Which is a big problem. Also, you run out of work area. That's kind of fine. You can start working on... Maybe that's not fine. <laughs> hmm. Well, actually, no, this should be okay. If we set you up here. Remember this bush, chat. It's important, okay? Remember this. So then we're going to get... Uh, what am I looking for? Forester's hut. We can put it down here, I guess, uh, without uprooting any trees, preferably. So, like, here. We're going to get a forester that maintains the forest over here. Your hawks arrived, too. I got a text alert from Amazon. Got that 11th century kind of smartphone. It's actually just a, a brick of clay. Little symbols carved out. Call that a tablet. <laughs> kind of funny that uh, they expect me to have level three burgage plots at this point. Like, yeah, that's not happening, man. <laughs> that's not happening. Because you need a lot of things for that. We need to build a tavern, but to build a tavern... You need a whole lot of things. So, like, let's say that we want to set up a tavern. It needs ale. Okay, that's... Doesn't seem too bad, except uh, to get ale, what do you need? Oh yeah, you need a malt house. Oh yeah, that also needs firewood and barley. Barley, which we don't have worked into our crop rotation. Because if we did, we would starve. So that's kind of too bad. Import barley? We can import barley. But I am specializing my town in farming. So maybe... Maybe we can grow our own.
What's your problem? Fuel stall? Yeah, that's not my problem. We have plenty of firewood, just go pick it up. <laughs> 10 months of firewood. I'm sure you can take the time out of your busy schedule to go down to the market and purchase firewood once a month. I'm sure it's not that bad. Okay, Forester's Hut. You guys remember that bush? You're supposed to keep track of it, chat. I think it's this one. So we're going to maintain the forest in that area. So we can keep chopping down trees. I love deforestation. Okay, yeah, so if I want to import some spears. 84 and then 17 a pop. Damn. That's expensive. But... We need spears and we're not ready to build them yet. And then eventually... Let's get one desired surplus, actually. Just one. So then eventually, uh, when we can build spears, we can export them. And we've already established the trade route. What is it about clearing the forest that's so satisfying? I love tearing down nature and building up industry and uh, human civilization. I love bending nature to the will of humanity's whims. Yeah, we're probably going to import barley. It is, for sure, the worst thing in the entire process. And it's also probably expensive. 12 to import barley, that's crazy. <laughs> import tariffs are wild these days. I think, I think Corbenberg is a little bit uh, too protectionist. <laughs> Gotta reduce the import tariffs. I don't even think they're our import tariffs, though. Remove the tariff from foreign imports. Okay, so... Technically, I think they are. New family. Perfect. And we just spent a whole lot on spears, didn't we? Oh yeah, we also have more uh, shields now. That's good. Do I really not have enough fuel? No, I think that's... That's gotta be bullshit, right? That has to be. 266. I think we're fine. We do have a lot of bread, though. Oh my god, wait, I just realized. Uh... We're not going to have enough variety in our food. We're going to run out of food variety because all we have right now is bread. It's the only thing that's left. Wait, no, we have some eggs. I forgot about that. We have eggs. We're fine. We got berries and eggs and some meat sometimes, occasionally. Can I hire cows and raise them for meat? Oxen, mules. What do mules do? You'll not find finer wares anywhere else. Lambs? Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Horses for trade, mules for wait. Do mules help you transport goods? Like, not the same way that oxen pull logs, but like do they do they carry things for you? Because that could be huge. Most people walk around transporting one thing at a time. I mean, look at this guy. Look at him. Carrying one large shield with him. 
But if we could get multiple things, hmm. Probably. Okay, so maybe we can investigate that, but I'm kind of broke right now, so. The only thing we can do is import spears and prepare for the attack, because the raiders come in 30 days. Can you guys even see that in the bottom left? I know I'm playing on a higher resolution than normal, because normally I play games in 1080p for streaming, but this is in 1440p. So I hope everything's visible on everybody's uh, monitors. It's certainly not a great game to be watching on mobile. <laughs> Sorry about that. Slap my microphone. And so I'm sure in about 30 days, when the raiders supposedly arrive, we're going to have like a lot more time before they actually like do anything. I figure. Because what are they going to do? Like spawn in the middle of my territory? Nah. And even then, yeah, I feel like... I feel like this guy's gonna take care of him. I feel like I won't even have to do anything. Not to mention, I don't know how strong the raiders are, but I assume they're not that strong. I assume you're supposed to be able to beat them with the starting equipment, which is 20 spears and 20 shields. Probably. Oh, also, we do need a lot more families, because once, once we can get back on the fields, we're going to need four people to work on the fields. Or maybe three. Depends. But, uh, yeah, we definitely want more properties or more burgage houses. Can I hold down to check, uh, who I can expand? Maybe? Like, how many families you can have? Two families? I don't know, maybe. A burgage plot, we're gonna slap that bad boy right... Ooh, do I want that right there? Yeah, I do want that right there, that's fine. You know what I want? I think... I don't know if this is a good idea. But if what if I reduce the plot divisions? That's an extra house, but I want I want a workshop as well, so maybe I'm not doing this right. Maybe what I actually want... Something like this? There we go, because that's two families and what I plan to be, or what I plan to uh, turn into a vegetable... thing. Vegetable garden. So if I do that... Pretty sizable vegetable garden, I would say. It also requires labor, which is why having two families is not that terrible idea. And also it's February, meaning uh, shouldn't even be that big of a problem to start growing them in the spring. If we build it on time. Money, let's go, baby. Okay, we can build more, or we can buy more spears. How many do we have? 21. What is happening? <laughs> oh, I think I know what's happening, because I only specified a surplus of one. So when I do that... Unless I need... I need it for trading? I need the, the thing? I don't know. I feel like I should be able to get spears a lot faster. But maybe it's because I only said it's a surplus of one, so it buys one, and then it has to wait for someone to come by and pick it up. And that's the problem. So maybe we can build spears or uh, buy them faster now. Anyway, level one, expand the living space.
course makes trade fast I don't know if we have the money for a horse I mean it's seven days as well uh, okay fine we can order a horse And a camp sighted. Ooh, that's kind of close. Hmm. Okay. Also, raiders are near. They will attack in six days. Yeah, see, here's the thing. So, whenever a bandit camp spawns, the other AI always brings in their army. So I don't even think we're going to have to fight the other guy, like the bandits that are incoming in the next six days. I feel like we won't have to fight him. So how many planks do we have now? 59, okay, so that's a lot, like a lot better. In terms of planks or a timber, Let's make that 25. You'll have to fight him. I didn't have to fight him last time. <sighs> Requirements not met, yet I feel like this is not my problem because we have 291 firewood. If you cannot figure out how to walk down to the market and get firewood, skill issue. And that's it. One day remaining. The final day, 24 hours remain. Enemy units spotted. Dude, they're so far away. Wait, yeah, what? Look at them. Look at these guys. They're not even moving. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Wait. Oh, they're coming for me. Nah, I'm sure they'll intercept them. Nothing ever happens. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. What about you guys? Where are you going? See, look, they're, they're looking to intercept them. I told you, we'd be fine. Nothing ever happens. Oh, hello. So is this a combination of... Yeah, I guess it would be. So level one families... Sorry, level two families are also level one families. Meaning we have two houses that are level one, which of course makes sense because we just got these houses. Oh, right. It's, uh, it's almost, well, practically is spring, which means the berry deposits are regrowing. We need to start working in the fields. Let's get three families working in the fields. Now that I think about it, you also do not need... You can have one in the communal oven. Uh, you can have one person here. We don't need anybody there. And we also need... At least one person over here. And then next month, we should have enough space for one, maybe two families to come in. Move the ox to the farmhouse. Yep, thank you. I'm going to forget to micromanage that. The children yearn to work in the fields. True. The fields, the mines, any kind of hard labor, to be honest. The 
The best part is that you don't even have to pay them. <laughs> Although I don't think a lot of payment is, is happening in this market, to be honest. Let's discuss the uh, the economy of a of a 10th century village in the middle of nowhere. How do you think it works, chat? Do you think people pay for these things? Regional wealth never seems to leave unless we purchase things from outside. But is there is there wealth between people? Hmm. And how does it work when someone uh when people pick up stuff and move them to the storehouse and then sell them, how does that work? Are they are they purchasing the meat from the hunting camp? Aiden Hardtack and Lint. Okay, but what about the people who make the hardtack? What do you pay them in? Wait, so if you get one family... Because these guys are plowing by hand. Do you really have to plow by hand? Or could we just get like one... One ox to do all the plowing. <laughs> you pay the guy who makes the hard tack lint. Okay, so let me guess. You pay the guy who makes the lint in hard tack. Oh shoot, I forgot about the raiders. Oh no, wait a minute. Uh, hey guys. <laughs> nope, nothing ever happens, we're fine. Oh god, what is happening? No, 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 we're fine, we're fine, we're okay. Defense is doubled, but attack frequency? Push forward. How do I move you guys? Wait. How do I change your position? Like, what if what if I want to move you? What if I want to... If I right-click to move... Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. That's not really what I had in mind, but... Okay, so here's how things are going to work. You're going to... Stand your ground. Because you have the big shield and they do not have the big shields. And I don't know if this is going to work. We might actually die. Who knows? We have shields. So in theory, we should be able to form like a wall in this. I don't know if you even if you would call that a choke point. I mean, it's like not really. <laughs> No, 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 we'll be fine. How, how are we doing on that? Effectiveness 74%. Why is our effectiveness... Well, I guess we don't have enough... Wait, fatigue and cohesion. Okay, screaming, we get it. Um. Oh, we might be losing chat. <laughs> oh, God. Maybe, maybe we don't want to stand our ground. Maybe we need to route them quickly. Okay, our effectiveness is going up. Okay, okay. Stock screams in the background. Lovely. 
Now we got this. Now we've totally got this. We've already killed 11 of them. Get them, boys. I really should have fought the battle outside the city, but I actually didn't think we'd be fighting them. Now oh, give chase. Give chase. Run, 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 run. Run to positions. Push forward. Get him. Kill him. Don't let a single one leave. Yeah, get him. Get him. Stab him. Ah, shoot. People suck. Okay, I don't think there's anything we can do about that. Alright, they're gone. Fine, whatever. Just ban the unit. That wasn't so bad. Although we have a bunch of bodies on the ground now. Yeah, maybe we should deal with that. Having a bunch of dead bodies is generally considered... Pretty unhygienic. Here we go. Corpse pit. <laughs> do these do these attackers even deserve a proper burial? I don't know. Alright, corpse pit right behind the church. That's crazy. Well, now we need someone to work at the church to be a grave digger. I don't know if they're going to dig the graves here or if they're going to be laid to rest in the church. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, okay. So it looks like... Sewing progress isn't done yet. Terrible location for the corpse pit. What, you don't want the corpse pit right next to the church? The defense of Corbinburg is a tale that shall be told until the end of time, mainly with how the local lord re refused to deal with the brigands until they were in town. Well, uh, I didn't think it was going to happen, so... Corpse pit is for raiders, church graveyard is for your people. Well, maybe we can move it. Ah, oh, we can't move it. Oh, I see. Wait. What are you doing, good sir? Okay, whatever. Put the corpse pit far away on bad land? Okay, fine. We can get rid of it. What even is bad land for us? I mean, we can't even build over here. You can put it far away like this direction. Corpse pit. Uh, yeah, we can put that like right there. That's whatever. It's an act of war. Well, what am I going to do about it? This guy would annihilate me. I don't think he plans to attack me, so it looks like he's going to clear out. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Where is he going, chat? Wait a minute. Now let's, uh, let's hold on a second. You're, you're not gonna... 
No, I'm sure it'll be fine. It's maybe a bit too far. Okay, I, there's no winning. No winning with you people. <laughs> okay, we can put it down like, uh, I don't know. I don't want to put it near the farm. I mean, it would be excellent fertilizer, but I don't think the game would recognize it as fertilizer. Over here, I guess? You know what? Yeah. Final answer. Oh, look. Is that a dead guy? Nah, you're not dead. See, this is the best part about building the roads as you go, is that you have no idea where you're going and it makes it look more authentic. Oh, there we go. Can build that. Okay, we successfully defended the city and survived for two years. I think I'm going to call that as a pretty decent five hour long stream. I love the winding path to the mass grave. I love winding paths in general. Where it feels like you have no idea where you're going and then eventually you're just there. Anyway, you know what? That's probably a good place to end things off because, you know, five hour stream. I don't know. I got to build this kind of uh, stream endurance over time. You know, 14 hour streams incoming one day. Anyway, uh, here we go. Corbenberg. So we got Corb Haven and we got Corbenberg. Maybe if I wanted to make it Hafen, then I should have made it like no E, but whatever. Corbenberg. Let's go. All right. That's Manor Lords. Good game. So same time tomorrow? Unfortunately, no, because tomorrow I'm going to record a video which will be even better. So there you go. Because I have... Yeah, so here's the thing. I think there's going to be... Hold on. They they released the... Uh... First of all, we can, we can just close this, actually, because I, I saved the game, so we can quit. So first of all, let's go back to this. Second of all, out of curiosity, did they announce the uh, release date for the DLC? The EU4 DLC, the one whose name was recently revealed? Because, uh, yeah. Let me just, let me check real quick. Just to be sure. for uh, release date okay so it says on Steam that it releases the 8th of May that's good because I didn't know if that was public knowledge okay so the uh, DLC releases on the 8th meaning any EU4 video that I would want to make is going to be well I'd be able to make a video and then release it but two videos uh, less likely I mean, it's a possibility. If I could try to release a video for some time next week and then sometime on, I don't know, the 28th or 29th, maybe? Possibly, and then who knows from there? Yeah, I could probably work on something. Okay, so, yeah, there will be at least two videos before the DLC releases. Oh yeah, and also, I completely forgot to bring up... Where's my stream schedule? I knew it felt empty in here because I'm missing something. Oh yeah, here it is. Stream schedule. 
because there will be a second stream. It'll be on Sunday at 11 in the morning, uh, Eastern Time. We're going to play a little bit more of that Ambinar run that I started... Was that last week? I think it was. So that Ambinar run playing as Corvuria, the vampire guys. So we're going to continue that on Sunday. Tomorrow I'm going to be streaming... Sorry, not streaming, <laughs> recording. And then Sunday after whenever that stream ends, I'm probably going to edit a little bit. And then after that, I mean... Monday I'll probably edit something, then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday I have to work on the final thing I will ever have to submit in my entire academic career. And then when that's done... I don't know, I'll figure it out. I like to plan my weeks like two weeks in advance. Maybe that's crazy, but anyway. Is there anybody streaming right now we could raid? I don't think so. Mainly the question is directed towards is Saf streaming? Because I think that's the only person who has me enabled for raids okay it doesn't look like it all right i'm gonna see you guys on sunday how about that sound good we had a pretty decent stream five hours light work <laughs> all right i'll see you guys on sunday bye bit